All right, three seconds. It's a beautiful evening for football in Houston, Texas, where tonight inside U of H's TDECU Stadium, it's the annual 2023 Bayou City Battle, where the Knights of Episcopal will take on the Falcons of Kincaid in the Southwest Preparatory Conference Championship game here on Vipe Live. I'm Aaron Schneider, and tonight I'm joined by Gentry Williams. And Gentry, we, uh, We've seen these two teams play once before this season. It was a 42-35 victory for Episcopal. Do you think we're going to see another high-scoring affair like we did a couple of weeks ago? You know what, you know what, Aaron? I'm excited for tonight's matchup. And just like you said last time, it was a high-scoring affair. Both teams moving it up and down the field. So many, pro so much prolific talent on the field. So, Aaron, it could be another high-scoring affair. But these defenses, they've been watching film, so I think they're going to be prepared, and we can see a totally different ball game here tonight. And then talking with Kincaid's coach Nathan Lard, it's uh, it, they saw a completely different offense from Episcopal when they played them the first time. Everything they'd been showing on film was absolutely completely different. So uh, he said that they were a little caught off guard by that. It took him a little bit of time to get adjusted, but he thinks tonight that he just wants to stay out of the way and let his athletes play. And as you mentioned, so many prolific athletes on both sides of the football. And I think tonight we might uh, we might see in his mind he thinks this is going to be a low scoring affair. Yeah, I know defensive coordinators and head coaches they they take high scoring games pretty personal, Aaron. So anytime you score 42 points, they're in the film room. Absolutely, and uh, they've spent both of these teams a lot of time in the film room, especially Episcopal because Episcopal has been preparing for Kincaid pretty much for the last almost month since the last two times they met, just for the simple fact that they had the back end of the easy schedule in the SPC. And then they had a bye week last week. So we'll see what happens here as both of these teams, I imagine, will be well prepared for one another. has been played and we are about ready to commence football here from the University of Houston and, and Gentry it was funny walking into the stadium tonight this is the SBC championship game but there's a big banner hanging there calling this the Bayou City Battle yeah and since 2008 there's only been one time that the SBC championship has not been won by Episcopal or Kincaid and in that time period, Kincaid with eight titles, Episcopal has four. Wow. And it was only in 2016 that All Saints won it. Otherwise, it, it really has been these two squads going up against each other. Six of the last ten championships have been won by Kincaid, including the last two as Kincaid goes for the three-peat tonight. Yeah, Kincaid was aided the past couple of years by Mike Bell, a Notre Dame corner now. As he was a big part of this defense last year, so now KK is going to look to lean on some of their younger players in the secondary to shut down his high scoring offense. As the captains meet at midfield for tonight's game, captains for Episcopal, number two, Braylon Thompson, number 10, Ty Blevins, number 14, the quarterback, Carson Gordon, and number 77, Cullen Witt. Cullen Witt, the brother of University of Texas ace pitching standout Tanner Witt. 
And he will anchor the offensive line tonight playing left tackle. For Kincaid, Will McMacken, as well as George Kugel, Parker Kubitsa, and Nico Gomez, your captains. And Episcopal has won the toss, and they've elected to receive. So the Knights want to put their offense on the field first. And with that, Gentry, we're going to get to see the standout quarterback, Carson Gordon. Yeah, Carson Gordon he's a, has a couple of power five offers. Verbally committed to University of Las Vegas, Nevada, early on to start the year. He's rated the number eight quarterback in the state of Texas. And, and when I say he's a dual threat quarterback, he can do it with his legs. He can do it in the air. He's just a very dynamic player, and he's, this is a big stage here at TDC, TDC uh, U Stadium, so I'm excited to watch the kid play. Yeah, and he's coming back from an injury. The only one loss, the only blemish on Episcopal's record this year was a 33-32 loss to St. John's, and he was a little banged up in that game. He was confined in the pocket, and you talked about being a dual threat, not really having the ability to, to run the football that game, which is one of the things he does so well. And I think we're going to get a chance to see that skill showcase tonight here when the lights are the brightest. You couldn't ask for any better weather here tonight. Beautiful. Oh. Man, it's beautiful out here tonight. It's a beautiful night for football. Clear skies. The temperature is perfect. You got the turf field. I mean, it's, the conditions are right for an exciting championship game tonight. There is no doubt about that. Kincaid looking for their 32nd SBC championship. They've won 31 of them, 26 of them since 1972 when the conference format, championship format switched. And an actual championship game was played before that. They really was determined by standing. And we're just about ready for football tonight. Kincaid's gonna wear the all black unis with the dark purple helmets. Piscable tonight in the all-white with the white helmets. And Grant Peterson will have the football teed up for Kincaid. Back deep to receive is Brandon Thomas, as well as number 18, Garen Sampson. High kickoff, Sampson's going to call a fair catch. And wow. he's going to call the fair catch inside the 10-yard line. Interesting. Well, it's always that rule, Gentry, when you're standing on the 10. We use it a lot for punt returners. You stand on the 10, the ball goes over your head, you let it go. But you know exactly where you're standing. And he took a couple of steps back, and it's not going to be great. Well, I take it back. The rules changed. I forgot about that. Now you can fair catch. So if you fair catch on the kickoff return, it comes out to the 25. So now that makes a little bit yeah, more sense. Yeah, I was, I was with you, Aaron. I was a little confused. I was worried there for a pistol. <laughs> And so under the direction of Carson Gordon, they will come out an empty first. Gordon's going to be in the shotgun, standing back at the 20-yard line, line of scrimmage to 25. Gordon will take the snap, and it's a quarterback draw right up the middle. He's got some room to run 40, 45 across midfield, and he's still on his feet. And Carson Gordon to the team, five touchdown. And Episcopal will draw first blood. And Gentry, we talked about the dual threat quarterback and being able to run. I'd say Gordon's maybe 100% healthy tonight. Yeah, 100% healthy and very dynamic. You've seen the ability on the legs right there. And what he, what they did, they took advantage of the numbers. Lined out four wide receivers to the left, had three offensive linemen to the right, and just had the numbers advantage and ran Gordon to the right side. Easy touchdown there for the Episcopal Knights. 75-yard touchdown run, and how about that? Episcopal strike, strikes first. And now on to attempt the point after will be Logan Phillips. Snap back. Snap back. The hold is down, kick is away, and it is good. And just like that, a 75-yard touchdown run from the quarterback Carson Gordon on the opening play of the game. And Episcopal leads Kincaid 7-0. And so we uh, we were talking about Nathan Lawrence. Maybe a one play and five yard touchdown begs to differ. You know, you know, what, Aaron. Sometimes. Uh, when the game started, they just get a big play touchdown like that as a defense. Now you can honestly, you can settle down. You're like, hey, that's the worst thing that could have happened. Now your offense could get the ball, sustain the long drive, allow your defense to recalibrate. So don't panic. 
right now if you're Kincaid. Yeah, absolutely. You know, got kind of nerves have to play a little bit of a factor into this, and so maybe maybe as these teams settle into the game, things might change. Alex Camacho's got it teed up, and he will get a little pooch kick. Uh, it's going to be returnable, taken out the 10, out to the 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. A big return and still on his feet for Kincaid is number 20, Miles Raider. And the big running back is going to take it midfield and the Kincaid offense is going to have great starting field position on their opening drive. And you talking about fireworks to start the game, Aaron. We're seeing big plays after big plays and you see why these two teams are year in and year out in the SB, SBC championship game. So many athletes across the field and a very excited to watch here. Yeah, Kincaid unfazed by the big touchdown and they are right back at it. And they will be led by junior quarterback David Capobianco. He will stand in the shotgun. He's got running backs to his right and to his left. Two receivers right, single receiver to the left side. Now he's going to send a man in motion. That's number 11, Nico Gomez. Capobianco wants to pass. Looking deep. Floats it up and he was looking for Gomez. Gomez lost his footing and Capobianco's pass really not anywhere close. Sails over his head and out of bounds. It'll be second and ten. Yeah, Nico Gomez had to step on him. You see a lot of teams doing, taking what Mike McDaniels and the Miami Dolphins doing with that pre-snap motion and getting that wide receiver a head start before the snap. And that's what Kincaid tried to take advantage of there. Yeah, They'll Nathan, come back to that play later. Nathan Lauren talking about trying to create mismatches in this man defense. And they try to exploit him on first down. Second down, they're going to hand it off to Raider. Raider across the 50. And he will go into Episcopal Knight territory down to the 49-yard line. And it'll be a short gain. And it's going to be third and about seven now here for this Kincaid Falcons offense. Capo Bianco, a little bit of a freeze there. Stalls on the snap and now looks to the sideline. And he wants to change things up here as Lucas Peters signals in. The offensive signal from the sideline. 37. Gomez will go in motion again. They're going to fake the handoff. Looking across the middle. He's got a man. And he underthrows him. Goes incomplete intended for Jordan Manuel. And Kincaid, a starting field position spot, Gentry, that looks so promising. And now it's a three and out for the Falcons. Yeah, just couldn't connect on that pass right there. He had him right up the seams. Just a little... Just going to execute all the way to the end of the play, and that's another play Kincaid can come back to. And so far, they've been dialing them up. Just got to execute. Grant Peterson will step back to do the punting. Back deep to receive will be Braylon Thompson, the senior for Episcopal. And they're going to oh. fake it. Peterson steps up, and he's going to be still on his feet, looking for room to run. 45 makes a move. And he's not going to get back to the original line of scrimmage. Kincaid wanted to dial up a little trickery there. And it doesn't work as Peterson went to throw. He had a man in his face. He pulls the ball down and just has to run around. And in the end, great coverage there for Episcopal. Now the offense is going to take over with great starting field position at the Kincaid 48. Yeah, good open field tackle there by Carson Fowler, able to get him down. And he almost broke that and tried to reverse the field, but again, this, King, this Episcopal defense is very disciplined. Yeah, well, Kincaid, they're showing they're out for blood. They want to win this game in the worst way, and they're willing to dial it up. They had a short field. Unfortunately, it doesn't work out. Gordon's going to fake the handoff. Now he's going to toss to Thompson. Thompson running left. He's got some room. And finally going to be wrapped up. Hit initially by Caleb Pitts. Thompson. As Braylon Thompson will get. And then officially give him six on first down. Yeah, good job that time by the offensive line and the outside receivers on the perimeter blocking, allowing Thompson to pick up some yardage there. And I'm liking how Episcopal early on is just. Only two plays, but they're mixing them up, mixing it up, keeping his defense honest. And such an athlete to account for in Carson Gordon, but uh, there's athletes all over the field for the Episcopal Knights, and they have a, a long tradition of them. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Wild night here. Yeah, a little wild night action. They're going to they take the direct snap to Brandon Thomas, and Brandon Thomas, he's going to have a first down and finally be forced out of bounds. Brandon Thomas, the ball carrier. 
Thomas the junior. He's got a Penn State offer already on the table. As the clock will start to run again as they reset the chains. The last, last game, Thomas, he, he gave Kincaid all types of problems running that wild night offense, also catching it out the backfield, running out the backfield as well. He's a very dynamic athlete. You see why Big Ten schools are coming calling. Yeah, we talked about athletes all over the field. He's another one of them. Gordon in the shotgun, wanting to pass, throwing it up the right sidelines. He's got a man, and did he catch it? They say no, it hit the turf, intended for Braylon Thompson. And it was really good coverage there from Kincaid, and very nearly threading the needle is Carson Gordon. But unfortunately hits the turf, and that's gonna bring up second and 10. That was George Kubel in coverage for Kincaid. Line of scrimmage gonna be the 35, the substitutions for Kincaid. And Gordon's gonna stay in the shotgun. It's a tight bunch formation to the right side. Lone receiver to the top of the formation. They're gonna fake the handoff. Now Gordon's gonna run it himself. And he's gonna be pushed out of bounds by George Kugel. As Kincaid's defense stiffening a little bit here as the Knights approach the red zone. Yeah, that was a good job there by Will Mac McMallon there up front at the linebacker position. Three. Reading the play, down, getting to the seven, outside, making a big nice. time tackle there, forcing the quarterback out of bounds. So it's going to bring up third and about seven. Line of scrimmage is going to be the Kincaid 32 yard line. Let's see if this is four down territory for the Knights. This will be a long, long field goal from this range. Another tight bunch formation to the right side. They're going to hand it off. Running, running left initially. Now back to the right. To the 15, to the 10, 5, and touchdown. They'll find the end zone again. This time it's Brandon Thomas. He took the handoff, started left, and he cut back against the green. Nobody home, Gentry. That's a big touchdown there. 32-yard touchdown. Yeah, big shout-out to the Shout out to Alex Lozada, the big left guard. He, he was out to pull, but Thomas read his block and cut back on the backside, and he hit his head on the goal post. And things are getting scary here early on for the Knights. Extra point attempt, snap, and the hold is down. Kick is up and good. And just like that, we've got eight minutes and 54 seconds remaining still in the first quarter, and it is Episcopal 14, it's Ken Cade 0. Well, Gentry, it's a little it's a little strange to say this, but the reality is the last time these two teams played, it was Kincaid that jumped out to a 14-0 yeah. lead. And then it was Episcopal that scored on five consecutive drives to blow the game open. It got a little tight late, but so you, you can see how easily either one of these teams with the athleticism they have could get right back in this football game. Yeah, definitely. Both of these teams have, are, are, have that quick strike ability to where they can make a big plays. Uh, Big time touchdown. So Kincaid is far from out of this game. It's a long game. These two teams been playing. These kids been playing against each other since they was in middle school. So no surprise here on the Kincaid sideline. And the football going to be teed up by Alex Camacho. Back deep again is Miles Raider. He is the deepest man. I'll tell you what, the Pittsburgh uh, student section, they're turned up as well. Absolutely. It is. Uh, you know, the stadium is a big stadium, but uh, some good representation on both sides for sure. Camacho's kick going to be taken by Raider again. To the 10, 15, out to the 20, 25. Got a line of blockers out to the 30. And he'll be tripped up across the 30 officially. Going to mark him out, looks like, near the 34-yard line. And right now, for Kincaid, this offense, they're going to have to sustain a nice long drive here, give their defense some rest. Uh, they've had a couple of bad breaks. You can't get your defense back on the field too quickly with a turnover or three and out in this situation. Absolutely. And Kincaid capable of long drives. They, they went on a 16-minute, 27-play drive to ice the SBC championship game a year ago when Kincaid won 17-6. 16 minute drive how about that something like that would be really nice right now to let that defense rest man gonna move in motion left to right they'll reset him that's parker kubitz 
And they're going to take the snap. And that's Cooper Chambers running, the backup quarterback. 5'9", 175 pound junior. They'll use similar to that Wild Knight formation, maybe the Wild Falcon type formation. He is the backup quarterback, but they use him more in the running game. Yeah, good job there by, by Zach Juan up front. He lines up in the defensive tackle position. Also, I've seen him in field a couple times playing the edge as well. He's just a very physical defensive lineman here for the Episcopal Knights. Keep your eye on 21 up front. Capo Bianco in the shotgun. Raider behind him. They're going to move Cubits from the right to the left. Strong package left side. Capo Bianco wants to throw. He's airing it out deep. He's got a man open and he overshoots him. He was looking for Grant Peterson and he had him running in the free in the secondary and just overshoots him a little too much air underneath that football. Yeah, I tell you what, there's been three plays so far for the Kincaid, Knight, Kincaid Falcons that it, the, it's been a perfect play call, just can't get the timing and execution right. So, like you said, Aaron, just keep, you know, just keep playing hard, and maybe you can hit on one of those big plays. Yeah, and the thing is that the, they have had what they wanted there. I mean, they've dialed up the right plays. It's just the execution piece, as he spoke to Gentry. If they can execute here, the, I think the what they want is there. Just got to settle into the game and make it happen. Capo Bianco, shotgun, Raider behind him. Now Capo Bianco is going to step up in the pocket, throw it across the middle, and it's caught. Out across midfield to Christian Murray. And that'll move the sticks. And there's that first down that Kincaid needed to help give this defense a little bit of a breather all the way down to the 45. Yeah. Yeah, shout out to Lucas, Lucas Peters, Owen Daniels, John Friday, and Steve. Moss, the offensive coordinator is here for the Kincaid offense. They've done a great job of dialing up this offense so far. Capo Bianco in the shotgun. Looking short across the middle. Caught by Gomez. 40. And wrapped up there. Now a penalty flag is going to come in. It's Nico Gomez. Nathan Lauren calls him a firecracker. They're going to use him all over the field. One of his favorite players. Edwards, number we'll see what this penalty marker on the field is right now. They're going to call personal foul face mask, and that's wow. going to be against Kincaid. And just when things were looking up for the Falcons, they're going to take a personal foul penalty. It's going to move them back 15. And talk about flipping the field. Kincaid all the way back on their side. Going to take them all the way back to their own 44-yard line. Yeah, talk about things that can potentially kill a drive is personal foul penalties. Now set yourself up for a first and 25 here. Yeah, but they have the capabilities of making big plays to pick up this first down. So it is first and seemingly forever here. First and a little over 20. As Capo Bianco fakes the handoff. He's under heavy pressure. Now he's going to float it out, and there's nobody there. And waiting for a penalty flag. I yeah. don't see one. Looked like that could have been in the neighborhood of intentional grounding. I'm not sure if he was outside the tackle box either. So uh, looks like they, yeah, they're not going to throw a penalty flag here, but that was very close. That's yeah, going to be second and long here. And see if they go back to the air, if they want to give Miles Raider the ball and see if he can cut some of this yardage down here so they're not facing a third and forever. Raider stands behind Capo Bianco. Two receivers to each side in balance formation. Ball working off the left hash. Capo Bianco wanting to pass. Looking in the middle. Caught. And another big catch there by Nico Gomez. He gets all the way down inside the 40-yard line. And Gomez is going to get a big chunk of that back. And now this is definitely going to be third and manageable for the Falcons. Yeah, Nico Gomez already shown himself as a dangerous weapon here for the Kincaid offense. And that's a big time play there to, to shorten the chains here to make it third and more manageable here for Bianca and offense. And Capo Bianco's pass was a little high right there. Gomez went up and hauled it in. Beautiful catch. Capo Bianco wants to pass. Short pass. He's got a man open and he breaks free. It's Jordan Manuel shifty down inside the 20. And for the first time tonight, it'll be the Kincaid Falcon offense in the Episcopal Knights red zone. Yeah, yeah, just a simple hit try out there, get to the first down, get to the sticks, get the ball, become a playmaker, get some rack yards, and now this Kincaid offense is starting to hum. 
Apobianco, he's a good passer, completing over 55% of his passes. He gets Manuel again there on first down. And so nice, safe, short routes. But being very effective in moving the chains. We'll get him down inside the 15 of the 14-yard line. Kincaid's offense trying to go fast now. Capobianco stays in the gun, and now maybe they went a little too fast here. It's either going to be a false start here, and it will be. Called against Kincaid, so that'll slow you down in a hurry. Yeah, what right now what Kincaid is doing, they're attacking that slot because the corner is playing about 10 yards off. And what they're doing with Manuel is they're playing him off the line of scrimmage as well, as well. So you can't jam him coming out of his break. And that's causing all types of problems so far. So after the penalty, it'll move back to second and nine. Line of scrimmage is going to come all the way back to the 19-yard line. Cap, 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 Cap oh, Bianco. Man, get that all, out every time. Standing in the <laughs> shotgun. He's looking to pass. Going to throw the fade route up top and double coverage. And I'll tell you what, if Manuel would have caught that ball, Gentry, that would have been an amazing catch as he was blanketed top and bottom in that secondary by the night. So it's Braylon Thompson and Sean Thompson in coverage for Piscopal. Yeah, we would have seen that when we woke up uh, this, that, uh, the next morning on Sports Center or on Twitter somewhere. That would have been one of the plays of the year, but couldn't get it. Now here's a critical third down for this Kincaid offense. Got to pick up a first down here or at least stay in field goal range. Absolutely. Kincaid needs points in the worst way. They trail 14 to nothing with 5-11 on the clock left here in the first quarter. They're going to work off the right hash. Capo Bianco in the gun. Miles Raider stands straight behind him. We haven't seen a lot of Raider yet early in this football game. And Capo Bianco, a little bit of miscommunication. He had a man running deep open. I think he was looking for Manuel out there on the far side of the field. But overshoots his target and nearly intercepted by Piscopo. Yeah, he felt the pressure. Tyler Cesarski was coming in off the edge and when those big fellas are starting to collapse the pocket, it's tough for a quarterback to settle in and step into your throw. And Kincaid showing no signs of the field goal unit coming onto the field. They're going to go for it here on fourth and nine. Watch the blitz. Jackson Bianco wants to pass. He's got a man and and I don't understand why you would run a route short of the first down marker. That's what Nico Gomez does. He makes the catch, but I think he's going to be short. Oh, man. He... And it's going to be right at the sticks. And usually you run that route a little oh. bit further and come back to it. And, and it is going to be about maybe a foot short of the first down marker and Episcopal, a big defensive stand for the Knights. Yeah, big time defensive stand there for the Knights. They brought the pressure coming from a defensive back position, but nice blitz, blitz pickup by Kincaid. But I'm with you here, uh, Aaron. I, I don't see why he didn't just take that extra step to pick up that first down. So unfortunate circumstances. Now Episcopal Knights nice back in on this, offense. This is the worst starting field position for Episcopal all day. They started at the 25 and then they were up near midfield, so they're going to start at their own 11-yard line on this drive. Gordon in the shotgun. He's going to go empty again. He ran a quarterback draw out of this formation last time. This time he's going to pass, and his pass goes incomplete. Incomplete. It was intended for Garen Sampson. And just like that, the offense now, they've been sitting just about four or five minutes, and now they're a little bit off rhythm, just a little bit. That's why it's important for offense to stay in drives just to cool a hot offense off. Yeah, and the defense, as you said, a little bit fresher right here. And this is what Kincaid prides themselves on. Nathaniel Lauren, he prides himself on this defense. He's also the defensive coordinator. And so giving them a rest, we'll see if the Falcons can pin their ears back a little bit here. Gordon the shotgun, he's got it back to each side. Kincaid showing blitz, and maybe they jumped off sides right there. And that pass was deflected away. That was Parker Kubitz that got it. But I think that maybe Kincaid was offsides there. He was showing blitz and maybe leaked across the line. Actually going to call false start against the Knights. Wow. And actually Kincaid's going to decline the penalty. They'll take the result of the play, which was an incomplete pass. So now... It is going to be third and ten. So on the loudspeaker here, the PA in the stadium thinks that they <laughs> took the penalty and it's going to be second and 15. But Kincaid said we'd rather have third and ten deep 
in their own end zone. And so here we go, third and 10. Gordon's gonna stay in the shotgun. Running back Thomas stands to his left. Three receivers to the left side, one tight end to the right. They're gonna hand it off to Thomas. Thomas looking for some running room and he's gonna be upended by Josh Sweetland. Thomas, and we'll see if he got enough for the first down. I believe he's gonna be just short as they mark the line of scrimmage out to about the, that's about the 17, 18 yard line. And now the Episcopal punting unit will come onto the field. A nice defensive stand there by the Kincaid defense. Able to get him down right before he picked up the first down. And now you're getting the ball back to your offense. And that, on that previous drive, they was able to find some rhythm, just couldn't finish the drive. So good job here by this defense. And it should be a good starting field position for Kid Cade as Matthew McCreevy comes on to punt. Back deep to receive is the backup quarterback, Cooper Chambers, the junior. Standing all alone at about his own 43-yard line. Piscopal will punt it away. Nice punt. The drive Chambers back a little bit. He's going to take it at the 37, out to the 40, 45. And he's still on his feet. And unfortunately, a good Cooper Chambers return is going to be nullified with, I believe, a block in the back by the Falcons. Tackled at the 48-yard line of the Knights. We'll check the flag. That starting field position, while it's good, it's going to go back the wrong direction for Kincaid. And they're going to call it a hold, not a block in the back, but rather a hold Holding against Kincaid. And so that will move the line of scrimmage all the way back, closer to where Chambers initially caught the punt. Line of scrimmage officially will be just shy of the 35. Yeah, now both teams have finally settled into this ball game. We're starting to see the even matchup here in a true championship game. Now it's starting to become a chess match between these coaches and the players out on the field. And how, how soon do you feel, Gentry, it is before Kincaid needs to score, before maybe a little bit of panic sets in here? I give him another drive or two. As uh, long as they can hold uh, Episcopal to 14, they're, they're still in good shape. And what a pass design right there. Pass Ooh. is complete to Peterson. A little bit of a shifty move. And a smart, smart move by Peterson wrapping up that football with two hands as the contact got close. And what a nice play design there by Ken Cade as Peterson comes running wide open and a big gain on first down for the for the Falcons. And I wonder if Grant Peterson plays basketball because that was a Euro step. He just put on a defender there and able to beat him. So they move the chains. Capo Bianco will stand in the shotgun all the way down to the 32-yard line of the Knights. Capo Bianco is going to pass. Standing in the pocket. And nearly intercepted as he throws that into heavy traffic. That was intended for Jordan Manuel. Three defenders for the Knights were there blanketing it. I've been very impressed with Braylon Thompson. His ability to break on the ball once it's been in midair. He's done a great job at the safety position. He, he nearly caught a touchdown early in the game, so you know he has the ball skills once the ball's in the air. Yeah, he moves very, very well on tracking the ball. I mean, you just got a center fielder out there. I wonder if he plays baseball, too. He almost got a center fielder right there at safety. Capo Bianco's got three receivers to the right, and one to the left is Peterson. They're going to swing it out, toss to Gomez. 30. 25-20, Gomez is free, 10-5, and Gomez reaching for the pylon. And they're going to mark him at the one. Nico Gomez, he certainly caught a piece of the pylon because the pylon dislodged right at the goal line, but he must have hit the back side of it. And they're going to say he's just short. It's just a little swing pass to Gomez, and Gomez does the rest. Nice play there by Gomez. Good, good blocking on the perimeter again here by the Kincaid offense. And now, right here on the one-yard line with the opportunity to punch it in, see if they go a little Philly special quarterback sneak. This would be big right here. Two minutes and 58 seconds where they can get on the board still here in the first quarter. Tight formation, and Raiders going to take it in. He takes the direct snap, and Miles Raiders good for a yard out, and the Falcons are on the board. And that's the answer that the Kincaid offense needed right, just right there. And they now make it a one-score game. Nice heavy package there at the one-yard line. Yeah, he walked in all by himself. And now the unique uh, swinging gate formation. They're going to go for two. Oh, uh, ah. And he is wrapped up. That was a quick toss out to Reed Luizzi. 
And he goes nowhere as Episcopal sniffs it out. And what do you think about that, Gentry? You like that call? Uh, you know, it, it's been on it's been on schedule what they've been doing. They went for it on the fourth down earlier. They're being aggressive so far. So if that's their game plan coming into tonight, then I like it. As long as they keep that same way the whole game. They certainly have had their foot on the gas as they went for it on fourth down once on a fake punt. They go for two there to try to get eight instead they come away with six so with two minutes and 54 seconds remaining in the spc championship game here on vipe live it's the episcopal knights 14 it's the kincaid falcons six Welcome you back, Vipe Live. It's the SBC Championship game here at TDECU Stadium on the campus of the University of Houston. After the scoring drive, the Falcons on the board. It's 14-6, Peterson has it teed up at the 40. He's gonna kick it away, and another fair catch gonna be called by Brandon Thomas, and that must be a strategy yeah. for the Knights because Thomas is athletic as he is to catch that ball right around the 10. You would think that he's got enough room as an athlete to make something happen, but he was been very quick both times to call fair catch. Yeah, it, it must be something that's been uh, coached to him throughout camp, throughout the season. And, you know, they really changed these rules for the safety of the players. A lot of collisions going on in these kickoffs, so Episcopal right now just make sure their players are staying safe during the kickoff return situation. And when you have a quarterback like Carson Gordon, doesn't really matter maybe where you start. That's maybe also the philosophy. He stands in the shotgun, first and 10, line of scrimmage to 25. Gordon's going to hand it off to Thomas. Thomas running right, and he makes a man miss still on his feet. And Brandon Thomas turning nothing into something right there as he carries out across the 30 to the 31. He is so elusive, and he also has great vision. He, you could tell he was so patient, waiting for a hole to open up, and he just made some out, out of nothing there and picking up six yards on the play. So second and four now for the Knights. Piscopo built a 14-0 lead before Kincaid got on the board. And the Knights have scored on all but one of their drives so far tonight. And hand it off to Thomas. Thomas running right, stiff arms, 35 to the mm. 40, lowering his head. And how about that? Brandon Thomas, a strum of Falcons to finally stop him and bring him down. But Thomas started with a stiff arm. He finished by lowering the boom. And he'll move the sticks for the Falcons, or excuse me, for the Knights. Yeah, he, on that last drive, he, on that last play, he showed his elusiveness. In this play, he showed his power, first with the stiff arm, and then with the physical finish. You see, man, Penn State, they might have found themselves a, another dynamic running back. And Episcopal Knights, they, they've been so good at getting these players to college and then also yeah. on to the NFL. Like Jaden Waddle. They're playing for the Miami Dolphins, absolutely. And they've they got another one that's about to be drafted at Ohio State right now. Donovan Jackson, an offensive lineman, graduated in 21. He's projected to be a first-round pick in the 2024 NFL Draft. They fake the handoff to Thomas. Gordon's going to keep it. Stutter step and finally going to be knocked out of bounds. There's maybe the contact from Isaac Lai that pushed him out of bounds. But... Once again, Gordon showcasing that he can run as he picks up about four on first down to bring up second and six. Four yards, second down six. Ball at the 47. Good job there, just keeping it, getting up field. So far, Episcopal just, like you said, uh, there's so many weapons all across this field and dynamic athletes. You don't know who's going to get the ball. There are double slots there. Now they're going to move into a heavy package left side. Gordon's going to take the handoff, give it to Thomas. Thomas seemed to be losing his footing from the time he got the football and just dives forward to midfield. Brandon Thomas. Just to get positive yards. They'll bring up third and about four facing the Knights here. Gavin Johnson, credit for the it's a big third down for the Falcons defense. Yeah, yeah, big third down here. Again, Thomas. Christopher Carlson, he's been playing very well up front for the Kincaid defense. He, 
He's been pushing it to guard back into the backfield, causing a little hesitation from the running back. Gordon in the gun. He's got Thomas to his right. Double slots, Steve, one to each side. They're going to hand it off to Thomas, and Thomas diving forward again, just continuing to gash this Falcons here. defense. Not tons of yards at a time, not like the big play we saw from Gordon earlier, but just five, six, seven yards at a time, and that's enough to move the sticks. Yeah, just little, little plays here and there, try to wear this defense down. You know, your, your, your defense just get, gave up a touchdown, so now they're keeping their offense on the field, trying to sustain a drive here. The line of scrimmage is going to move to the 45. And they're going to have four receivers left side of the short side of the field. The ball's on the left hash, so heavy, heavy bodies on the left side. Single receiver to the right is Brandon Thomas, the running back. And now Gordon is just going to let the clock expire. And that will wind us down to the end of the first quarter. Your score here in the SBC Championship game. It's the Episcopal Knights 14. It's the Kincaid Falcons 6. You're watching it all here on Bike Live. We welcome you back to the SBC Championship game here at TDECU Stadium, John O'Quinn Field on the campus of the University of Houston where the Episcopal Knights lead this game 14 to six. It was the Knights that struck first, a 75 yard run from the quarterback Gordon. And they added a 32 yard run from Brandon Thomas. And I'm sorry, Gentry, I cut you off. No, no, it's okay. I was gonna say that play right there really set the tone early on in this ball game. And this is right now Pistol. They're just putting together a nice drive here on a ground game. They're gonna hand it off to Thomas. Thomas running right out across the 40, now inside the 40 to about the 37 yard line. And then Thomas, the ball to finish off and cap off the scoring. Kincaid Thanks. right before the end of the first quarter got on the board. A one yard at TD run by Miles Raider. They missed the two point conversion. So that's your current 14 to six score. But the Knights are driving again, facing a second and about three here. 38 yard line is the official line of scrimmage. And right now, it, it just seems like they're just trying to wear this defense out with the running game. Yeah, you know, shorten the game maybe a little bit too. Gordon takes the snap. He's going to hand it to Thomas, running off tackle left, and KK defense does a good job there Thomas, of wrapping him up. Good tackle from Cooper Chambers. And it looks like we're going to be just going to be a fourth down coming right here. That's just third down. And, and it's, get, gonna, it's gonna be third and two. Third and two. I get, see if that. I couldn't remember if it switched the stick on me yet or not. So third and two for the Knights, and I would imagine maybe four down territory. And with as heavy as they've been on their packages, you would think two yards is feasible with this running game. Bringing pressure from Kincaid. And Thomas going to carry out across to the 35. He is right at the first down marker. And the initial indication on the far side of the field is they flip the four. So this is going to be fourth down and about, looks like maybe about a foot. And I would imagine Episcopal is going to go for this all day long. Yeah, especially when you have a dynamic quarterback like Carson Gordon. No, and, a, and an experienced offensive line of all seniors except for one, which is Alex Lozada. And that, Offensive line gets the push that they need. That'll move the sticks. It'll be first down first for the Knights. For the and that play right there kind of, you know, sums up this game right now. This Episcopal offensive line, as you was alluding to, is so far dominating on this drive and has been dominating tonight, allowing the playmakers to be dynamic and exciting as they've been so far. 
Yeah, the center, Charlie Allen. Your left guard tonight, Alex Lozada. Your left tackle, Cullen Witt. On the right side, the right guard, Jack McKinney. The right tackle, Billy Willis. Give those guys some love. Working hard in the trenches. All seniors except for Lozada, who's a junior. Throwing it out to the sticks. And they're going to say incomplete. As that pass intended for Logan Barty. It's going to hit the turf Logan just Barty in front of him. He had his man receiver. open and Gordon just Brings a little short on the pass. The and again, Brandon Thomas, he gets a lot of recognition for running the football, but that time doing a good job is picking up the blitz oh, the and chipping the defensive end on that play. And that's how you're going to get on the field early once you get to the next level. Yeah, and how does that look when you look at these scouts? They, they obviously see the flashiness of how he runs, but to see his willingness to block as well, I think that says a lot for the scouts looking at it. They're going to hand it off, running left. And now somebody without the name Gordon or Thomas is finally going to carry tonight for the Knights. That's and Carson Fowler. That's going to be Carson Fowler, the backup running Carson back. Carson Fowler with the carry. And that's how you just continue to... Mix up, got to give, you can't, you got to give Thomas a break here and there. He's been playing hard, so in the depth of Episcopal, it's going to be very pivotal down the stretch. It'll be third about five now facing the Knights. Deep into Kincaid territory, line of scrimmage, the 27, and knocking on the door of the red zone again. Gordon stands in the shotgun. He's going to send a man in motion left to right. Heavy pressure off the blitz from Kincaid. Two guys get hands on him. Oh. And he manages to get rid of the football. The pass is complete. And that'll be a first down. It was complete. Out to number 18, Sampson, number Darren 18, Sampson. And what a job there by Carson Good Gordon on nice staying on his down. feet. Sucking in the defense and completing the first down pass. And it's a Thomas, 15 to the 10. Makes a man miss, and now the football popped out, and Kincaid's got it. One of the Kincaid's secondary popped him in the back, and the ball comes out. Kincaid wraps it up. And how about that defensive stop, Gentry, when it looked like Episcopal was about to walk in. What a deep, what a heads up play there by the deep defense. They were to get in there and pop the ball out. And that's gonna be huge here as that's gonna provide the spark that the Falcons need to get, you know, to get the offense going. And I'm not sure if Parker Kubetzo was in on maybe he knocked it out or maybe he recovered. I'm not sure. It's one of the two, but Parker Kubetzo was involved in that play. Just a mass of bodies on the far sideline. But a huge stop for this KK defense as Episcopal seemed to be moving the ball at will on offense on that drive. And you said last time, you know, the last game, Episcopal, I mean, KK jumped out 14-0 this game. Uh, Episcopal jumping out 14-0, so we'll see if we can have a comeback here. Capo Bianco, they're going to throw the screen pass to Raider. Raider had a man right in his face, and he makes a miss. And Miles Raider, by the time it's all said and done, is going to carry the ball out across the 10 to the 12-yard line. And Miles Raider Colin making Walton, something out of nothing. The yeah, they tried to set up the screen play there. At that time, it was a jail break up front, Raider so the big fellas five, could get out and block those little guys five, on the perimeter. So good open field tackling there by the Episcopal Knights. And after that's all said and done, it's a gain of five for Raider. A big game. As Copa Bianco stands in the shotgun. Quick pass out. Looking for Gomez. Gomez got it at the 20. And a big hit there across the 25. As he is brought down by Ty Blevins. But a big game for Nico Gomez. And there's a reason Nico Gomez is going to Washington University. The Wash U getting a good one with Nico Gomez. As he has been a spark plug for this Kincaid offense all night long. Man, he's, a, he's a heck of a player. And excited to watch his continue, continue to watch his career. They're going to move him out. Right to left, and then the pass going to be complete to Manuel, and, and maybe that's the effect, Gentry, that starts to happen as they fed Gomez so much with that movement now. The Knights have to account for Gomez. It's almost like the eyes were in the backfield, yep. and it opens things up for Jordan Manuel. A nice pass from Copa Bianco, and the sticks will move again for the Falcons. And as you alluded to, just got the eyes of the pistol with nice defense, held him up just for that split second to allow Manuel to get open. Raider stands behind Copa Bianco. It's a balanced formation. Two receivers each side. Dump it to Gomez. And Gomez 
That's going to be good for about five, maybe six on first down as I mean, Gomez just capitalizing on the fact that this Knights defense is playing off and just literally just quick screen turns, asks for the football, Copa Bianco gives it to him and they've got a gain of six. Yeah, we're going to see if there's going to be an adjustment made because they're lining Gomez up in a slot which, and they're putting him off the line of scrimmage so you really can't even jam him. See how far, how far back he is off the line of scrimmage? Yeah, that'll let him to get hands on him. Now you're moving him around, so somebody else has to account for him, just creating that space. Ooh. They give it to Raider and a big stick there from Ty Blevins. Really almost turned Raider around. Raider had a little head of steam, and he turns him sideways, does Blevins. And it'll be third and a, it feels like a long yard here for the Falcons. And Ty Blevins coming up and laying the wood that time. And, and it's been a physical football game here. In, this defense, that's how, you, that's how you excite your defense and provide a spark. And they're gonna draw him off sides and- Free play. Yeah, it should be a free play. There was contact made though. Now the question becomes, were they drawn off sides? I saw everybody moving, but I think it's gonna be an off, there it is. Off sides called against the Knights. I think the movement from Kincaid was based on the fact that like three of the Knights jumped across the line of scrimmage. Good hard count there from Copa Bianco. So that yard not so hard to get after all. It'll be first and ten as the night, excuse me, as the Falcons move into tonight's territory down to the 44 yard line. Officially the 43. Copa Bianco wants to pass, throws it out, caught. That's Peterson. Bianco's pass. And Grant Peterson, the senior with the catch, and Peterson, Peterson doubling the as the kicker. I had to look twice when I saw the starting lineup because I saw him listed as the kicker. He's yeah. not a big guy, but on top of the kicker, he's also one of their primary receivers. Talking about a dual, dual threat athlete, and that's what makes him so dangerous as a kicker. They can drop so many things for him. He has a hand. Second and one. Copa Bianco throwing deep. Man coverage, and it's incomplete. And the Kincaid faithful wanted a penalty. Yeah, it's not a penalty there. They both was, both guys' heads was turned. The ball was in the air. Good, good play. Good defense there by Braylon Thompson. Yeah, they both had their hands on each other. Actually, I mean, yeah. Manuel looked like he was set up to kind of push off of Thompson when he got the opportunity. So both, both of them had contact with one another, and a good no call there. This is big boy football. It's going to get a little physical. The officials are going to let him play here in the championship game. Third in the yard now. Facing the Falcons again. Copa Bianco stands in the gun. Raider directly behind him. And I was going to say that's a false start on Gomez. And Gomez did a little kind of shudder there. I'm not sure if he did it intentionally, but it'll be a five-yard penalty it's going to move back so what was a third and one all of a sudden now becomes a third and six a little bit tougher to pick up for the falcons here five minutes and 11 seconds remaining here in the second quarter it's been a it's been a long drive here between one one long drive for a pistol now a long drive for falcons has chewed up a lot of the second quarter Four receivers, two to each side, ball working off the left pass. Copa Bianco wanting to pass. He's gonna throw it up, and now that's maybe yeah. gonna be a holding call there. Yeah. That's definitely holding. Uh, right after five yards to pass, that was just way too much contact, didn't have his head turned. That's textbook holding right there. Yeah, Nathan Lauren is absolutely livid with the official. And I'm, I mean, they got the penalty. Maybe he wanted a different call. Maybe he's talking about the spot. I'm not really sure. But he was livid with the officials, throwing his hat on the sideline. and It's going to be pass interference. It'll be a 15-yard penalty. So we weren't sure if it was a hold or a... Actually, I don't think that was a... I don't think it was pass interference. I think they just called holding. I mean, the line of scrimmage hasn't really... Didn't shift a whole lot, did it? No, they it was five yards, so it must it must have been just been a holding call. They announced it on the PA as a 
they announced it as a pass interference, but I think it's just a holding. But it, either way, it's good for a first down. And the Episcopal Knights are going to take a timeout to talk about it. And Nathan Lard is still in the hip pocket of the <laughs> official. You know what? Uh, Aaron, being an official is a hard job. I, you know, I always, you know, they're human. They're not going to get every call right, but they do the best they can. And you got to hear from the coaches, the players. That is a tough job out there. Yeah, and I, I did a volleyball game earlier this afternoon. There were six officials. I've never seen six officials for a wow. volleyball game. <laughs> and you would still be amazed at how many questionable calls or, or coaches talking to the, the officials and trying to get stuff sorted out. So even when there's more of them, it doesn't necessarily mean <laughs> in the eyes of the fans that they're any better. But, yeah, you're right. That's a tough job. And they're generally not getting a whole lot of love from anybody by the time the game's over. So coming out of the timeout, there's going to be five minutes and five seconds remaining in this second quarter. It's a 14-6 game. Episcopal leading Kincaid. It's the TAPS 4A SBC championship game here on Vine Plot. David Copabianco in the gun. Four receivers to each side. They work off the right hash. Gomez, little movement back to the inside. He's going to pick up a block and they're going to give it to Raider. Nice block there for Nico Gomez. Gomez not afraid to mix it up, whether he's catching the ball and running or whether he's blocking. Big block there. On first down, they'll get three. Yeah, right now for the King, for King K, they're just sustaining a long drive here, wearing this defense out. You're starting to see a couple of nice with their hands on their hips, but they're going to have to buckle in here and starting to uh, get close here for Kincaid. Copa Bianco takes the snap, quick pass out in the flat, caught by Christian Murray. He is wrapped up immediately in the secondary by Sean Thompson. Yeah, Sean Champ Thompson, three-star corner as well. Has offers from Rice and many other schools and verbally committed to Rice to start the year. Well, that was a big hit. It's third. And about three now. And you might think that uh, maybe Rice has the inside track for Episcopal's recruiting as the backup quarterback, Tyler Bloomgren, the son of Rice's head coach. David Bianco wants to, Capo Bianco wants to pass, and it's broken up, intended for Gomez, right at the 20 yard line. And that's going to bring up fourth down. And now you may be in that territory where you're a little too far for a field goal, but you're way too close to punt. So. It looks like Kincaid, I would imagine we might see him try to draw him off sides before yeah. we see a snap. Yeah, still have a timeout in their back pocket as well, so I'm with you. Try to draw him off sides first and get the exact play call that you want, depending on the look they show you here. Copa Bianco sends a man in motion, and he very nearly had it as yeah. Episcopal off the Gomez movement. They jumped, but they're managing to get back. And now there's the timeout as expected. And it comes from Kincaid. And it comes with three minutes and 49 seconds remaining. So both teams have burned a timeout now in the first half. As uh, we are looking at a 14-6 score. Pistol leading Kincaid. You're watching it all. The SBC Championship here on Viper. And we are back here at TDECU Stadium. A big fourth down play. Fourth and about three facing the Kincaid Falcons after the timeout. Ah, and left side. Oh, man. And so you, you would imagine you just talked about this after you took the timeout in the huddle. A hard snap count from the quarterback, Campo Bianco. And still... Kincaid manages the false start. They jump off sides here. 
And so now it's going to move back from a fourth and about three, looking at a fourth and about eight or nine yards. Yeah, look, just unfortunate there for King Cave. And look like they went with a heavy personnel tight end. They had to tackle, extra tackle there on the left side. So probably just wasn't lined up in his normal area, caught him off guard. So three receivers to the left side, a lone receiver to the bottom of the formation on the near side. Taking the snap, Capobianco. He's going to throw to the middle. He's got a man open. He gets a little bit tangled up with the defender, but the pass well over his head as that was Zach Koppel in coverage for the Knights. And so Kincaid will turn it over on downs. A long drive stalls out at the 30-yard line of the Knights, and that's where Episcopal will take over. They've got three minutes and 42 seconds and two timeouts left to work here. They have the ability to make a big play, especially Carson Gordon. So we're going to see what they like to dial up. They haven't really attacked downfield in the passing game too much, but a lot of runs so far here for the Knights. Yeah, Episcopal shortening the game while they got the lead a little bit here. Keep that clock moving. Thomas stands to the right of Gordon. Gordon in the shotgun will take the snap, hand it to Thomas. Thomas out across the 30, and he'll carry it all the way up near the 34-yard line. Thomas, number one. And be a gain of about four yards on first down. The with the Second and six. Yeah, I'm pretty sure here tonight they, they don't want to get a ball back to Kincaid as they're going to get the ball to start start it off here in the second half. So they're going to try to take this clock as, all the way down as much as they can. And try to get some points out of it if you can as well. That would be huge. As Gordon standing in the gun. Thomas to his right. We're going to fake the handoff to Thomas. Gordon, shifty, going to throw back to the middle. And it's incomplete. The penalty down. marker down. The pass just off the hands of Jackson and Reducci. Yeah, thing with those RPO plays, sometimes the line can get ahead of themselves to get downfield before the pass is thrown. Yeah, Gordon had to move around a little bit. I think that always, to buy him some extra time. And anytime you buy yourself extra time like that, it gives an opportunity for those linemen to work their way downfield, as he said. That is an inelig ineligible man downfield. And Kincaid's going to decline the penalty. And instead of giving him an extra down back, they're going to make him go on third down here, third and about six. Interesting play call or interesting choice there to decline that. Yeah, if I'm in the Episcopal huddle, I'm looking around at my guys like, hey, wait a minute. They must, you know, we, we got to take that a little personal. And Gordon was initially, <laughs> looked like he was going to line up in the slot. And now he works his way back to the quarterback position. And timeout going to be taken. And that's a timeout taken by Episcopal. Timeout. Out of the field. Two and we talked about Nathan Lauren, the head coach for Kincaid, but uh, I haven't talked as much about the head coach for the Episcopal Knights, Steve Lice, who actually started his career and spent some time coaching at Kincaid before going to Episcopal. He's in his 19th season at the helm of this Knights program. 123 wins, 46 losses, and one tie during that time. But uh, he has certainly put this Episcopal team back on the map. They've been, over the last eight years, have a conference record of 41-4-1. Yeah. And in addition, to, in addition to the football coach, he's also the head wrestling coach. He's got 502 career wins as a wrestling coach. Yeah, it makes sense why this offensive line is so dominant and why they like to run a football on such a physical team. It just they talk, most, most teams take on the personality of their coach. And the fact that he's a wrestling coach and the, the way the pistol plays, you can tell he likes the physicality. Four SBC championships under his watch in 09, 2012, 2015, and 2021. They're going to fake the handoff. Now going to float it out into the flat. And wrapped up short of the first down is Braylon Thompson. And that'll bring up fourth down now for a piston. We'll see if Kincaid wants to take a time out here and preserve some of this clock with two minutes and 43 seconds of counting remaining before halftime. Matthew McGreevy checks in to punt. 
And they're going to send back Cooper Chambers to receive it. Chambers standing inside Cooper his own Chambers 30. Is deep. McGreevy to punt. McGreevy oh. nearly has that punt blocked. He's going to get it away to Chambers. Chambers is going to fair catch it at about the 31-yard line. And so with two timeouts, KK certainly has enough time with the ability of Copa Bianco to pass the football down the field. They certainly have enough time to put some points here on the board, trailing 14-6. to And for all the fireworks, Gentry, that we saw early in this football game, as you said, everybody's kind of settled in and it's just really become more of a defensive battle here in the second quarter. Yeah, definitely, Aaron. Both these teams, like you said, have settled settled down. You know, playing at the University of Houston Stadium, so a lot of nerves there on that, those first couple of minutes. Now that these teams are settling in, a lot of the preparation and, and the hard work is starting to uh, play out on the field right now. Yeah, beautiful field here. It's my, my first time here inside TDECU Stadium, but uh, a gorgeous field. A great atmosphere tonight for the SPC Championship game. Copa Bianco wanting to pass. Quick pass to Gomez. Gomez makes the first man miss and stays on his feet. Nico Gomez, man, how tough of a runner is that guy? Hey, that, that's a tough kid right there. You see why Washington came out and got this kid, but it took eight nights to get him down. And uh, we can see from here, he's not the biggest guy out out there in the field, but, man, he has a heart of a line. Yeah, he's going to carry it out for a gain of about seven on first down to bring up second and three. He's only 5'9", 165 pounds, and that might be soaking wet. Oh, and Copa Bianco has his pass picked off by Ty Blevins. What a heads up play. And Blevins just stuck the hands up and the ball right into him, and that is a huge turnover for the Falcons. What a play by Ty Blevins right there. Yeah, Ty Blevins early, he laid the big hit. He's been setting the tone here for this Episcopal defense, now getting a turnover. And that's exactly what the defense needed as the Knights looked like they was getting ready, excuse me, the, the Kincaid was looking like they were getting ready to put together a nice drive, but now the Knights with the opportunity to tack on some more points before half. Yeah, minute 36, they still do have a timeout, so any type of points that you can get here would be big going into halftime. Kincaid will get the football to start Half number two. Gordon in the shotgun is going to send Thompson to the right. So he's got three receivers to that side. Stepping up in the pocket is Gordon. Now he's going to pass. And that one off the turf. It's incomplete. And Gordon maybe had some room to run right there if he wanted it. Steps up right back to the line of scrimmage. Unloads that pass and just a little bit short. And that's tough running back. The right-handed quarterback running back to his left there. Yeah, throwing across your body is, is always a tough throw. There's only probably two or three quarterbacks on this planet that's that's mastered that throw. So see if he can try to roll out to a strong hand, and that way he can deliver the ball with some accuracy. Second and ten now for Gordon in this night's offense. It's going to be a tight package here. That's something Coach Steve Weiss said they will do. They like their base package of just being spread, but they will organize themselves into a variety of formations, try to make the defense adjust as Thomas takes the handoff and Brandon Thomas goes nowhere wrapped up at the line of scrimmage and even driven back a yard it's going to bring up third and 11. And we haven't seen Carson Gordon just take it off and uh run it like he did on that first play and, and he looked he looked 100 percent running we know he's been a little banged up going back all the way to that St. John's game and, and so you know you wonder maybe did he tweak a little bit of something running on that run I mean he, did, he didn't look like he did he was like somebody shot him out of a cannon but they have not gone back to the run very much with him and right on cue running left 35 30 25 20 10 5 and stepping out of bounds is the quarterback Carson Gordon and Gentry just as we talk about it we we will it into existence as Carson Gordon takes off another huge run and he comes up just short of the goal line but it was almost he's almost 100 percent on carries tonight yeah every carry being results ending in a touchdown yeah that's that's pretty much right now so far has been episcopal's fastball their best pitch throughout the game and nice job there right there to set it up and allow gordon to use his legs Tight formation here. Now Gordon going to go into the center for the first time tonight. Line of scrimmage, the five. They're going to hand it off to Thomas. And Thomas is about to walk into the end zone there for a touchdown. 
but a penalty marker is down on the field, and it's going to be a false start called against the Knights. It'll be a five-yard penalty. It's going to move them back all the way to the 10, so it'll be first and goal from the 10-yard line. Still a timeout left for Episcopal. There's 38 seconds remaining here before halftime. They lead 14 to 6. Just a reminder, both cheer teams will be performing at halftime. First up. Yeah, they had their heavy package. The now they bring in Episcopal. more so. Looks like they're 11 personnel back into the ball game. One tight end, three wide receivers, one running back. Snap back, and Gordon's going to keep it. Gordon running left. 10-5, diving for the end zone, and... Touchdown. Did they call him? Far, far official touchdown. There it is. I finally see him call it. And they'll say that he got in. So Gordon is good from 10 yards out. It's his second rushing touchdown tonight. And it's a little bit of a delayed call. I couldn't find an official that was given a signal. <laughs> but a 10-yard touchdown run for Gordon. And now they'll line it up for the PAT. It's going to be Logan Phillips. Snap back. Hold is down. The kick is up. And Phillips is good. And so with 31 seconds remaining, Episcopal makes it good on Ty Blevins' interception. It's a 10-yard run from Gordon. And now your score, it's the Episcopal Knights 20. It's the Kincaid Falcons 6. You're watching the SBC Championship here on Vipe Live. Back here at TDECU Stadium. Episcopal Knights after the touchdown and then the extra point. Actually, it's 21 to 6. I think I said 20 before they had a chance to get the extra point attempt up there. So a 21 6 lead, 31 seconds remaining. Raiders going to try to bring wow. this one out deep in the end zone to the 5, to the 10, to the 15. Still on his feet out across the 20. And maybe thinking this offense doesn't really have a ton of time to work here. So maybe seeing if they can break something big in the special teams game. Raiders going to bring it all the way out to the 20. Yeah, that was a play early on in the first quarter. It was actually a very first offensive play. They went a real route with the Gomez coming in motion. And he had plenty of space out in front of him. See if they dial that one up here. Because it could break big for the Kincaid offense. Yeah, we'll see what they try to do, and that's maybe what they're trying to figure out. Do they take a deep shot here, or do they just kind of sit on this, knowing they're going to get the football back? But I think you have to be aggressive, and they've shown a tendency to do that tonight. They've, they've gone for it on fourth down with a, a fake punt. They've gone for two. They were not successful at either, but they have shown a tendency to roll the dice a little bit. We'll see if they do it here. Line of scrimmage, the 20. Copa Bianco's in the shotgun. Raider stands directly behind him. He's got a slot to the right in front of him is Gomez. They're going to hand it off to Raider, and that maybe answers our question. Is Kincaid just going to be content to run this clock out and get to the locker room for halftime, trailing 21-6? to A gain of about six on first down for Raider. It'll be second and four, but I don't think we're going to get another snap as officially... The clock winds out, and it will be halftime here at TDECU Stadium at John O'Quinn Field on the campus of the University of Houston Cougars. As your halftime score, it's the Episcopal Knights 21, it's the Kincaid Falcons 6. It's the SBC Championship game here on Vipe Live.
came in. We have sophomores, Ellis Jordan. Two-time All-American, Emily Bolton. Two-time All-American, Lane Maida. Six-time All-American and two-time top All-American, Ali Raymond. Juniors, Holland Hanslet. Berkeley Ryan. Mary Martha Rabelais. Keely Carr. Claire Murray. Porter Miller. Birthday girl, Kate Turlington. Bella Wincox. All-American, Emmy Bailey. All-American, Bethann Fitz. All-American, Amy Weary. Two-time All-American, Maddie Gonzalez. Two-time All-American, Mia Silvestri. Three-time All-American, Scarlett DuBose. And your seniors, Izzy Proler. Kennedy Mayberry. Annie Lyons. Social Media Chairman, Emerson Richston. Macy Mogus. Philanthropy Chair and All-American, Emma Chappé. Two-time All-American, Libby Schultz. Co-Captain, Julia Sherman. Co-Captain and four-time All-American, Emma Dabney. Captain and three-time All-American, Emma Michael. Give it up for the Knights. Let's give it up for Kincaid Varsity Cheer! Let's meet the squad. First, the sophomores, Taylor Edwards. Caroline Kibitza and Elizabeth Marshall. Next, the juniors. Courtney Brenner, Bennett Bowman, Anna Consoli, Natalie Marvin, Kate Hyman, Maddie Moss, Lauren McMacken, Maya McCall, Greta Prieto, Abby Shu, Sloan Thompson, Allison Whitman, and Anna Kate Wynn. The seniors. Carson Austin, Shade Ayade, All-American Abby Vale, Caroline Buckner, Mary Kate Cornett, All-American Ryan Horlock, Lillian Howard, All-American Raya James, Jacqueline Landon, All-American Haley Pizzoli, All-American Molly Pizzoli, Camille Weber, All-American Grace Rizel. And the varsity co-captains, All-American Blakely Brown, Helena Heath, and All-American Ella Schmuller.
And Kincaid went for it, missed the two point conversion. So we're at 14 to six. And then Episcopal after a Ty Blevins interception. And they used the short field and they cap it off with a 10 yard touchdown run by Carson Gordon. They add the extra point. And that's our halftime score, 21 to six. As we get ready for half number two. And uh, Gentry, what do you expect to see as we get ready for the second half? I mean, uh, maybe a relatively lower scoring affair than we thought we were gonna have when this game first kicked off. But what do you think we're gonna be seeing here in the second half? Well, Aaron, both these teams have done a good job so far playing good, sound, physical football. But it's been a big play so far for Episcopal, especially Carson Gordon. You mentioned it earlier in, in a, uh, how he was uh, dissecting the first half with Carson Gordon, some of those big 75 runs, 75 yard rushing touchdown, and just his ability to take advantage of the numbers advantage. But as far as Kincaid, what they're gonna get to a second half is just get number 11 of football, Gomez, get him going in open space and try to establish the running, running game. I know you're down two scores, but don't try to go for two as much. Peel back a little bit from the aggressiveness and just play good sound fundamental football and get yourselves back in this game. And that's one of the things Nathan Lauren talked about for, for Kincaid is being able to establish the run, let his defense play, stay out of their way, but they need to establish the run and they need to find those matchups in the man-to-man -man defense against Episcopal. And that's something they've maybe gotten a little bit away from is the running game. And maybe you never really saw that as Miles Raider, not a lot of carries tonight. And he's been the workhorse this season. I mean, he has had a fantastic season. Yeah, he's thousand a thousand yard, yard. thousand yard rusher, yeah. And he's had three 100 plus yard games. I mean, he's averaging 121.9 yards per game. And he's nowhere near that tonight and he doesn't have the touches for that. So maybe that's a product of being behind so much early, but we'll see if they go back to him in the second half. As Kincaid's gonna get the ball to start half number two. And you can't get all those 15 points back in one drive. You just gotta continue to just chip away. Chip away at that lead. Everybody gotta do it. Establish the running game. Allow your offensive lineman to fire off and hit those guys up front. Let them set the tone. And Kincaid, you could definitely get yourself back in the ball game here. And if you score on this drive, it makes a one possession game. So they're right back in it. Miles Raider back deep to receive. It's Alex Camacho. That's got the football teed up for Episcopal at the 40 yard line. It's the right leg into it, a line drive kick, and it's gonna roll out of bounds. And a good job there by Kim Cade and Josh Sweetland just letting that go out of bounds. It'll be good starting field position for the Falcons. And David Capobianco will lead this offense out. Capobianco came into this SBC championship game with 13 touchdowns and only two interceptions. But he did get his third interception tonight. It turned out to be a big one for Blevins that led to points for Episcopal. And now it looks like, looks like Kincaid's gonna decline that penalty and they're gonna have Episcopal re-kick this rather than taking the field position. They're gonna make him kick it again. Wow, so, so far I've seen Kincaid uh, turn down about three calls uh, so far tonight. So interesting decision here. So they, they are very high on their players. They're, they're saying, hey, we don't need the penalties. We believe in our execution. So again, just aggressive play calling here by the coaching staff. Yeah, Kincaid leaving nothing on the field tonight for sure. Camacho tees it up, now kicks it away. And it's going to be taken by Raider. Raider to the 10, to the 15, Raider to the 20. Raider out to the 25, 30. And Raider still on his feet, 35 and across the 40. And maybe that's why you make him re-kick it, as Miles Raider has the ability to make big plays happen all over the field, whether on offense or on the special teams unit. And he does it right there. This will be fantastic starting field position for the Falcons. And, and that's why you gotta get Miles Ray to go on plays like that. He has the ability just to make this, this uh, Episcopal defense pay. He's a physical runner. He, you know, anytime you see a running back not wearing gloves, oh, he means business. <laughs> Yeah, he uh, just seems like that workhorse kind of guy. Just stick him back there and let him run hard. And he will stand directly behind Capo Bianco on first down. Four receivers to each side. Ball working off the right hash. They're going to hand it off to Raider. And Miles Raider running out across the 45 to the 47-yard line. And Raider's going to pick up seven on first down. Yeah, nice physical running there. Good job by that Senegar combo. 
double teaming Wong, working their way up to that linebacker, giving, allowing Raider to get to the second level there and pick up some good yardage. And he rushed for 64 yards the first time these two teams played. They also had two touchdowns. I think it's important to get him involved here as they are given a heavy dose of him to start the second half. Raiders going to carry deep into Episcopal Knight territory down to the 34-yard line. Yeah, they went into that locker room and said, P.O.E., point of emphasis, point of emphasis, get Raider the football. You got to put the athlete or get the ball in the hands of your best athletes, and they're doing that now. The third straight carry for Miles Raider. That time it goes nowhere as Episcopal sniffs it out. And so he'll get right back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe second and 10 for PK. Yeah, that time KK was waiting on it. Again, Wong alongside of Ty Blevins there, able to blow that one up in the backfield. Clock running here, 10.36. We're just underway in the second half. If you're just tuning in, NK trailing 21 to six. They got the ball in the opening drive of half number two. They give it to Gomez, Gomez. Being drugged down, looked like he was going to be drugged down from behind. And instead, he fights forward near the first down marker. Yeah, shout out to Grant Peterson out there, setting, setting blocks out there, out there on the perimeter. He even got a pancake just flat in the corner there on the outside. And Tyler Saskarski looked like he was going to walk him down from behind, coming from that defensive end position. And Nico Gomez just manages to squirt away from him and fall forward. And just like that. Was there a penalty? Did I miss something? I thought it was close to the first down marker. I don't think the... Uh, oh, they didn't change it over. First, I was going to say, I thought he had a first down. <laughs> so it should be first and 10, not third and 10 as they're showing on the field. Copa Bianco is going to throw. Gets it to Manuel. Manuel down to the 11. And Kincaid is knock, knock, knocking on the door here on this opening drive of the second half. We're just seeing, you know, Styles make fights, and so far, Kent Cage is chip play here, chip play there, and now they're starting to sustain drives, and the offensive line is, is starting to feel themselves, and this offense is finally buzzing, and you're seeing why they're in the SBC championship game. Manuel and Peterson are split out to the left. Gomez in the slot, tight slot to the right, right behind the tight end. They're gonna hand it off to Raider, and Raider, can go nowhere. Raiders stacked up at the line of scrimmage. That's a good job there by Sasarski coming up from his end position and just kind of shutting off no Stonewalling. The, play. Second down and 10. the outside Falcons just the kind of blowing up that play right at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, if, if the offensive coordinator, Lucas Peters, Owen Daniels seen that play, <laughs> they're going to have to talk to David Cap Capianco, tell him to keep it because there was nobody on the outside. If he pulls that football, there's nothing but green grass in front of him. That's a play that's underutilized, that QB boot. You don't see it as much as you, as we probably should. Capobianco wants to pass, caught by Gomez. And Gomez is going to go nowhere after the catch as he is stood up by the probably six or seven Episcopal Knights. They're gonna mark him inside the 10 though, so forward progress is gonna get him down to the nine. So they'll wind up gaining three, and it's gonna be third and seven. Kincaid can get a first down inside the three yard line. Be interesting to see what they draw up here. Now you got to think, is this four down territory for you, Gentry? Yeah, I'm sitting here. I'm thinking about it right now, Aaron. I, I, I think this is because I don't know how much three can help you in this situation. But it is a long football game. Capo Bianco wants the pass. It's caught. It's a touchdown. Capo Bianco's pass to Robbie Taylor. And that's a King King Falcons touchdown. And just like that, the opening drive, the Falcons drive the length of the field. It was a Miles Raider big kickoff return to the 40. It's a 60-yard drive, and Kincaid's got it 21-12. What a nice drive here by the King, by Kincaid, establishing themselves, establishing the line of scrimmage, winning, the, you know, running the football, and now it's just a one-score game down by eight points. Looking for an exciting finish here on White Bluff. Yeah, Peterson's extra point attempt and good. So it's uh, it's 21-13. So it is a one possession game. It's Kincaid crawls within eight. That's a big opening drive. 
And you are watching it all here on Vibe Live. It's the SBC Championship here from TDECU Stadium. Mike's hot. So we welcome you back to TDECU Stadium. Here's the SBC Championship. Kincaid will kick it off. Fair catch going to be called by Episcopal. It was a Kincaid 60-yard touchdown drive to strike first here at half number two. They cut the deficit from a 21-6 halftime score to 21-13. And Episcopal will touch the football for the first time here in half number two. They get it with seven minutes and 42 seconds remaining. Carson Gordon brings the Knights out. Once again to the short side of the field, they're gonna run the three receiver set. They're gonna hand it off to Thomas. Thomas running right, and Thomas still on his feet out to the 30 yard line, and finally gonna be met by eight Brandon of the Thomas, 11 Kincaid Falcons on defense. But not before he gets three, maybe four yards on first down. As with the tackle. They just overload the short side of the field with yeah. receivers and try to get numbers. Yeah, six, uh, taking advantage of numbers there. And as down, far as Thomas, his running four, style, four he has a power, he has a speed, and also he has a lot of balance. A good comp for him, and you know, not the same you know level of player, but Alvin Kamara, just that balance with power and speed, can catch out the backfield. You see why a lot of you know, power five offers are also coming his way. And it looked like three to four yards, but they get six on first down. They're going to hand it to Thomas again. That time, Thomas has stopped after a game about one, maybe two yards. It's going to be third and short for the Knights. And now an injured Falcon down on the field. And that appears to be number 55, Christopher Carlson. Head trainer Cynthia Griffin coming out to take a look at him as both teams take a knee. Six minutes and 40 seconds remaining here in this third quarter. 21 to 13, your score. The Episcopal Knights leading the Kincaid Falcons. We'll take a quick break. You're watching it all here on Vipe Live. back. Christopher Carlson walks off the field under his own power. The officials wind the clock. We're ready to go after the injury timeout. He's going to hand it off to Thomas. Thomas barreling forward. He is right at the first down marker. We'll see if they give it to him here. And it's the spot's going to get him there. So that'll move the chains. And it's a first and ten now for the first Knights down, as they continue the to stay committed to this ground game. We really have not seen Carson Gordon's arm a whole lot tonight. 
As it's been a heavy dose of Thomas and then Carson Gordon flashing some runs as well. Episcopal very committed to the run tonight. Yeah, like you say, Aaron, they're just trying to shorten the game as Kincaid starting to find their rhythm offensively. Gordon on cue is going to pass, and now he pulls it down. He's going to take off running. 35, pulls back, and he's going to run out of bounds at the 39. You see Carson, Carson Gordon, I mean, if he doesn't know that he has some space vertically, he, he does a good job of staying lateral and avoiding contact. Yeah. Maybe that's a product of that, you know, hurting that, that ankle early in the season and just not wanting to re-injure it. But he doesn't, doesn't do dumb things with the football and yeah, try to force a lot of contact. Yeah, he's a very, very smart quarterback and avoids the contact, doesn't, you know, Put Kincaid, he's put the Episcopal in any type of trouble, and that's you know one of the best abilities to have that quarterback. He gains four on first down, so second and six, and now he's going to go under center. He's going to push his receiver wider, two receivers left, one to the right, and in I formation they're going to hand off to Thomas. And that's a formation we have not seen yet tonight. Thomas. Just an I formation, and just a straight old school handoff, just a power run. They pick up a couple more. It's going to be third and three. Yeah, like you're saying, you're in the old school fullback lined up in front of a tailback. And I'm pretty sure Thomas enjoys that, following behind a fullback, letting them clear out that linebacker to avoid that first hit at the second level. That allows you to get vertical a lot faster. I right? get north and south versus having to, to make as many moves. You can just put the head down and run. Blevins going to move left to right. They've got a strong formation on the right side. Now they're going to run back to the left. It's quarterback keeper for Gordon. And Gordon is stopped. A big hit from Josh Sweetland. As Carson Gordon goes nowhere, it was a designed quarterback run. They showed power to the right side. They moved both of those blockers to the left side as a convoy for Gordon. And Sweetland comes in and absolutely blows it up. Yeah, they, they, they definitely worked on some different techniques and the way they attacked the gaps on that quarterback power play as a good defense there by Josh Sweetland. He read the counter beautifully, seen the guards pulling and just hit the gap hard and able to blow up the quarterback in the backfield. So it'll be four down and out trots Matthew McGreevy to do the punting. He'll kick it away to Cooper Chambers, stands inside his own 20. They almost blocked one earlier, and they get close again, and this time... I think he got his hand on it. He might have, as that ball definitely changed direction, so... Is that number 12, maybe they got a piece of it? Parker Kubica? I couldn't exactly tell. He was there, Reed Luizzi was in the same area. It looked like somebody got a hand on that, and actually it's like everybody's... Giving high fives galore to George Kugel. So maybe it was Kugel that got a piece of it. But either way, the Kincaid's going to have really good field position here. And really all the momentum as we're underway here in the second half. It seems like everything going Kincaid's way all of a sudden. Four minutes and seven seconds left here in the third quarter. Capo Bianco stands on the shotgun. He's going to send Nico Gomez left to right. Looking for Gomez, and now he's going to come back on the slant. They use Gomez as a decoy in the flat, and instead they throw it on the slant to Robbie Taylor. He's got the touchdown pass earlier in the quarter. That'll be a gain of about, looks like almost eight yards on first down, bring second and two. I tell you what, Aaron, that old momentum, they're starting to change tide here, come, coming to the black and purple side for Kincaid, and you can feel the momentum completely shifting here in the second half, and right now, Ken K is starting to capitalize on all these opportunities. Now you hear that crowd. We're, we're sitting directly above them here on the Kincaid side up in the press box, and you kind of feel that every time they start to, to get loud, you start to feel that up here in the box. They give it to Miles Raider. Raider's going to carry out across the 45 for the first down. They'll move the sticks, and there's that crowd getting into it again. We've got cowbells here on the near side. And the far side, they keep banging the gong on the Episcopal side. So it's, uh, you're certainly getting a little taste of that with the crowd mics tonight. It's both of these these fan bases, they are very passionate about their football. Yeah, I'm loving the traditions. The student section over there by Episcopal. you got the student section here by Kincaid. Championship game here at U of H. Couldn't ask for a better uh, Saturday night football. 
They're certainly showing out here is good attendance at TDECU Stadium. Hold it. Kappa Bianco is going to step up, and, and nobody's going to accuse Kappa Bianco of, of liking to run, as that's not something he's done a whole lot of this season. Only 18 carries coming into this game for a grand total of 53 yards. And he certainly did not look like he wanted to foot, pull the football down and run there. He basically gets back to the line of scrimmage as the pressure gets in and the coverage was sound in the secondary and this pocket kind of broke down on him. Yeah, Cullen, Cullen Wyden and Tyler Sarosky, the two senior defensive end edge rushers, just collapsing the pocket on him and forcing him to step up where there was also inside pressure. Second and 10. They bring Gomez in a little tighter to help with the blocking. And they're going to hand it off to Raider. And Raider is stuffed at the line of scrimmage. And you're right, Aaron. What a polar opposite game here in, in game two between these uh, two schools in this matchup. It was a high scoring affair in the first game. Now you're seeing these defenses now stepping up and laying, you know, putting on some big hits and starting to set the tone for the rest of this game. Braylon Thompson and then number 16, Frank McRory. We haven't said his name a lot, but both of those guys converge from the far side of the field. A big hit there on Raider. Third and 11 as he loses a couple. Copa Bianco, pressure getting to him. Now he's going to run. Copa Bianco, 50. Ooh. And a big hit on Copa Bianco. And the football is out. And now Episcopal seems to be... Seems to be saying they maybe have the football. A shot on David Copa Bianco. Man. It may be fair to say that's why he doesn't like to run very much. He takes shots like that. You know, I wouldn't like to run too much either if I see Ty Blevins running around hitting like that. And they're going to say he did cough up the football. They're going to give it to Episcopal. So the Knights are going to take over at their own 47-yard line. And how big might that turnover wind up being? Already a touchdown off of Ty Blevins' interception that they used a short field to capitalize on. And let's see if they can do it again here as the turnovers hurting the Falcons right now. Lord in the shotgun. And he wants to pass. Can find nobody open. Here comes the pressure. And he's going to be hit. That was a big hit from Reed Louisi. They wanted a flag. Episcopal fans did, but it wasn't really a slide as much as it was kind of a fall down with your feet going forward. Yeah. It was really kind of late, too, I think. Yeah, you got you to gotta learn to slide if he, if he wants to get the official to help him out in that situation. Uh, just falling forward. Uh, he's still an active running at that point. Yeah, they'll give him a yard on the play. So he's second and nine. Three receivers right, two to the left. It's an empty backfield for Gordon. Gordon wants to pass. Here comes the pressure again, and they don't do a great job of containing, and Gordon's going to make them pay. 30, still on his feet, 25-20. And Gordon falls forward inside the 20, and the Episcopal crowd coming to life. All that momentum, Gentry, you talked about that was on the side of the purple and black. Maybe that pendulum starting to swing back Episcopal's way. Yeah, and, and, and Carson Gordon, he has been dynamic and just di slicing his defense up every time he gets outside the pocket. You saw him bringing the pressure from two linebackers up the middle. Nice recognition by Gordon getting outside, recognizing pressure, and making a big play. And just like that, the third quarter has come to an end. I thought somebody took a timeout, but instead, we're at the end of the third quarter already. So 12 minutes remaining to crown a champion here in the SBC championship game. Your score is the Episcopal Knights 21, the Kincaid Falcons 13. You're watching the SBC championship on Vipe Live.
And welcome back to TBECU Stadium at John O'Quinn Field. We're in Houston, Texas, the home of the Houston Cougars. And in this stadium, 12 minutes from now, the SBC is gonna crown a champion for 2023. And right now, Episcopal is trying to add to a lead. They lead it 21-13. They've got the football inside the 20-yard line. They're in the red zone. Line of scrimmage will be the 19. Carson Gordon, a big run. Pressure broke down, he got outside the pocket. And now they've got first and 10 from the 19. They're gonna hand it off to Thomas. Thomas running right. And Thomas is gonna be stood up there by Miles Rader. Thomas, the ball carrier. Hey, Miles Rader said, I run physical and I play physical on the defensive end. A big stick there, but good carry by Thomas. And Reed Louise's helmet will come off. And so I, I'm gonna let him stay in. I, they might send him off the field. They're gonna let him stay on the field. And quick, brief little timeout to help him reset. Second and five for the Knights. They're gonna hand it to Thomas again. Thomas running right. And Thomas is gonna carry down to the 10. And he is just about at the first down mark. It's officially gonna be third and yard. Third and one. Yeah, third and short here. They're gonna bring on their heavy package. As you're gonna see, they're gonna shrink the formation, have multiple Big bodies, tight ends, and fullbacks try to pick up this yard here. And if they don't get it here, now that does kind of put you in a in a dilemma situation where you almost maybe have to kick a field goal and make it a two possession game. Yep. They would love to get a first down here and not make that a question. Gordon's going to go under center, and he's just going to pull full or push forward rather, and he's going to get all the way down to the five yard line behind that big offensive line, that senior heavy offensive line. It's going to be a first down. The clock's going to continue to run. They're marking at the six. Yeah, Cullen Witt and uh, Alex Lozada there just dominating at the point of attack, driving those guys off the line of scrimmage, and then allowing Carson Gordon to find that alley to pick up some extra yardage to get him inside the six-yard line. Well, we talked about Donovan Jackson potentially going to be a, a projected first-round pick, but Walker Little. 17 graduate for Episcopal, playing for the Jacksonville Jaguars, and in high school is a top rated lineman in the country. Right, they are turning out good offensive linemen. It's Thomas. And Thomas, maybe if he had kept working the outside, I think he had some room. He cuts Thomas it back up. up and Thomas, they're going to give him, that's a generous Jackson yard Staley. to the five. Yeah, I'm uh, with you. Oh. Go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I bet, Aaron. Uh, I was with you, Aaron. I thought he had something on the outside there. Uh, plenty of green. And he has the speed to really outflank the defense. Just couldn't uh, he decide to cut it back in there. Yeah, when it's all said and done, they actually wind up not giving him the yard. They put it back on the six-yard line. So it'll be a no gain for Thomas. And Episcopal not in any hurry right yeah, now. Yeah, they got to have some type of sense of urgency, though. Eight seconds on the play clock. And now they're going to quickly race to the line, and I think Episcopal now going to have to take a timeout. You hate to waste one of those. I mean, I get, I understand you want to try to chew the clock up as much as possible. Nine minutes and 32 seconds left in the game, but at the same time, if you don't score here, this thing gets really, really tight late. You want to have those, those timeouts in your hip pocket. So two teams talk it over. As Kincaid needing a stop in the absolute worst way right now, you can ill afford to let Episcopal score another touchdown and go down two scores in a game that's moving Gentry relatively quickly as both of these teams heavy on the run. Yeah, both of these teams right now establishing a run at the line of scrimmage. And this is a big uh, stand here for this defensive unit and uh, try to, you know, come away, you know, without giving up a touchdown or a field goal if possible. So we'll try to force a turnover. I'll be swiping at the football if I'm a linebacker. And just try to get the ball back into the offense, allow them to tie this ball game up. And KK did have that turnover earlier where they forced Episcopal on the fumble. When it looked like Episcopal was about to score, Thomas got it punched out from behind. And that was deep in KK territory. So they would love to have something similar to that happen again. It looks like they're gonna go back into this heavy set. Second and goal from the six. Lone receiver out there by himself is Logan Barty to the right. The opposite side 
There's number 18, Garrett Sampson. Straight up the middle goes Thomas. Kincaid sniffs it out. They're going to stuff him. And it'll be third and goal. They'll move him a yard forward and give it to him at the five. Carson Gordon going to the sidelines. Want to talk to him. His offensive coordinator here. Yeah, look at the defensive front here for Kincaid. These guys are locked in and focused. They understand the moment right now as so far, you know, a bend but don't break defense has been with his defense. They gave up some big plays, but right here in the, in the red zone, this defense has been solid. They got Blevins now in the backfield, standing to the right of Gordon. So maybe see if Blevins is a lead blocker here. They're going to pass. Nope, Gordon's going to keep it. Gordon running right, trying to get to the end zone, and he will. Wow. And how about that? Carson Gordon. Will take it into the end zone for five yards out. He's got his third rushing touchdown of the night. He has just absolutely gashed his defense with his legs. Truly the, the epitome of an escape artist. Once he's outside the pocket, he is as dynamic as any quarterback in the city of Houston. Yeah, maybe he will be the next great from Episcopal that winds up in the NFL. We know for sure. He's going to wind up at a Power 5 school. He will commit this next week. We don't know where. But he will make the announcement. The extra point attempt is no good. Wow. And so uh -oh. see how that maybe figures into the equation. That will make it 27-13. And so now Kincaid, they're going to need a little bit of help here. As there's 8 minutes and 38 seconds remaining. And talk about Carson Gordon you've already said it he was the number eight rated QB in the state of Texas we know he's going to commit next week he's the also the 2023 Texas Gatorade track athlete of the year wow and so uh, it may be even an opportunity to not only to to play football but possibly run track in college as well that is that is impressive and, and you know a lot of power five schools are excited to get a type of you know a dynamic quarterback like Carson Gordon you know, I've, I got a chance to see a couple quarterbacks this year, you know, uh, the DJ Legway out there and Willis, you know, uh, possibly Gatorade National Player of the Year, but Carson Gordon has been just as effective and just as dynamic here this afternoon. Yeah, he has uh, kind of put this team on his back, if you will. We knew he was a fantastic player, but great players shine when the lights are the brightest. And on this stage tonight, Carson Gordon is certainly cementing his legacy at Episcopal High School. Deep to Miles Raider, 5'10", Raider out to the 15, 20. And he's gonna be wrapped up there. And he was hit he initially wrapped up by the feet by Christian Houston. Christian Houston, number three with the tackle. And so it's gonna be a, a tough road to hoe here for Kincaid. As, uh, this is not the best starting field position that they've had. They're gonna start it this drive at about the 23 yard line. Yeah, right now for KK, every from here on out, this is a this is a must score drive. Uh, I remember you asked me early in the, in the first half, Aaron, and when when the KK has to put some points up. From here on out, they got to start scoring. Only eight minutes remaining in this ball game, and no more mistakes here for this offense. And now maybe the the game plan that you would have loved to stay committed to maybe has to change now because they had a heavy dose of Miles Raider in the first drive. And maybe have to go away from that now and pass and try to continue to keep some time on this clock. Going to pass it to Gomez. Gomez catches wow. it. Gomez breaks free. And Gomez will move the sticks all the way out near the 40-yard line out. Officially the marker at the 37. Damn, I love this kid. This kid here, he, he's going to be a special player at the next level as well. And he's been a special player here tonight for Kincaid. What a tough physical wide receiver and you would just by looking at yeah. him just a sheer size I mean he's 5'9 165 pounds I said maybe maybe soaking wet I mean he's not a big kid at all but he plays with so much heart he has been a dynamic spark plug for this offense reminds me a lot of Tank Dale Copa Bianco wants to go deep looking for the home run ball and threw it off his back foot a little too much Mustard on that one as that sails over the head of Manuel. And so Jordan Manuel ran a long way for nothing. And we'll have to reset to be second and ten. Yeah, I like the I like the play call there. You gotta take your shots eventually. You can't just continue to deep, you know, dink and dunk your way up the field. 
But this, these safeties here for Episcopal, Thomas Thompson and Christian Houston do a great job of getting back and not, not allowing too much behind them. Second and 10, Como Bianco's gonna hand to Raider. Raider shifting, dancing, and he fumbles the football. And Miles Raider coughs it up, and it's gonna be recovered by the Knights. That's Carson Fowler falling on top of it, and you love the extra effort from yeah. Miles Raider, the dancing and the shaking, and it got him the first down and moved the sticks, but then the ball punched out. Sometimes too many moves. Results in exactly that, a fumble on the play for Miles Raider. Fowler covers it up, and now, all of a sudden, things are looking really, really good for the Episcopal Knights. Yeah, unfortunate there for Raider, but you know he's gonna get his opportunity again here once you know, Kincaid gets the ball back on the offense. See if this defense can now, you have to lock in. You know, all the film work, all the you know, summertime preparation, this is when the moment matters right now. You gotta dig deep and try to get this ball back. Seven minutes and 37 seconds. A tight formation here for Episcopal. We imagine we're going to see a heavy dose of the run here. And they give it to Brandon Thomas on first down. Thomas wrapped up after a gain of about three. And if you're Episcopal, you would just Thomas. imagine you're just going to keep the ball on the ground and shorten this game as much as you possible. See. It's a two-score game at this point, 27 to 13. So Episcopal... Just trying to play keep away Three here. Game. Three second yards make it second seven. and seven. Nice. And another thing I noticed here for Kincaid, looking at their four down defensive line, they're not the biggest defensive line that you will see. And then you look at this Episcopal offensive line, there was some big, pretty big uh, young men out there. So that's where they're winning, the winning this game so far. It's going to be a tight bunch formation just off the outside of the left tackle. They're going to hand it off once again. The big number one, Brandon Thomas, and Kincaid is ready for it. No gain on the play, and it's going to make it third and seven. Yeah, nice job there by, by Reed Wisely no getting into the backfield, just reading that one correctly and able to make a tackle in a critical third down here for this Kincaid defense. See if they change something up here, and Carson Gordon winds up carrying the football. Maybe a, a bootleg or some type of QB draw. And I would imagine they'd want to keep the clock moving, so I imagine they're looking to run it, but I can't imagine they're going to give it to Brandon Thomas three times in a row. Yeah, they're going to hurt to hurry up. Four seconds left on the play clock. They get the snap off, and Gordon, pressure going to break down, and he's just going to slide down, and a good job there by Cooper Chambers, mirroring him, keeping Gordon. the outside contained. And it'll be a loss on the play, and now Kincaid's going to take a timeout. And they'll take it with five minutes and 53 seconds remaining. About a three-yard loss on the play. Actually, it's going to be more than that because they had, what, third and seven. So take this back and make this fourth and 13. So they're going to be lost for about six yards on that play, Gentry. Yeah, big loss there, but smart play there by, by Carson. Excuse me, by Carson Gordon, not going out of bounds, not, you know, putting himself in harm's danger, sliding, making Kincaid use that timeout, but great job by this defense getting a quick three and out and ha having their offense back. But what do you think about the play call in there for a piss? We think that's a little too conservative, or are you, you okay with the two-score lead, just trying to shorten this game with that clock as much as possible? Yeah, I'm, I'm okay with that at, at, at this point in the game. Um, that's That's been your strength. Carson Gordon getting outside the pocket, that's where you've – hurt this defense the most. So you, you, lean in, you, lean, you lean into your strength. It just, you know, Kincaid was ready for it that time. Shake their hand, let your defense win you to book this ball game. So Matthew McGreevy will come on to punt. Chambers gonna be back deep to receive for Kincaid. He stands inside his own 20. Kincaid must score on this drive. They were moving the football on the last drive before Miles Raider fumbled. So they gotta have a score here. Nice punt. Great punt from McGreevy, right to the 20. Chambers has got it, 25-30. Puts his foot in the ground, gets it out to the 35 and across the 40. Oh man, that was late. And I'm not sure if he hit him out of bounds or if they got tangled up on okay. the stick right there, I think. It, the official that had the, the down marker, well actually it was the... Yeah, I, I think maybe he just dropped it. And I think maybe they all kind of tripped over it going out of bounds. That, that was very close to a late hit out of bounds. So and how that would have been huge for Kincaid to get another 15 tacked on. So 
right now for Kincaid is all about just confidence and belief at this point. I know right now it seems very slim, but man, this this is a great moment for these young men to believe in each other. You you know they have the talent, they have the ability. I know you're down two scores, but keep fighting. You guys can get right back in this ball game. Capo and Bianco in the shotgun. Miles Raider directly behind him. Gomez running right, moving to left on the motion. Capo Bianco is going to have it picked off. 30, 25, 15, 10, 5, touchdown. And Episcopal will ice this game with a Zach Capel interception return for a touchdown. Wow. Read beautifully there by Zach Capel. House call for a pick six and... That was the last thing that could have happened there for Kincaid, and that's so unfortunate for them, but what a play here for Episcopal. Now that gives them a three-score three, three score lead, and all but seals this one, Aaron. And David Capobianco only had two interceptions the entire season coming into this game. He's thrown two tonight, that one for a pick six, and it could not have come at a worse time as you take it all the way into the end zone and now it's a 33-13 lead for Episcopal pending the PAT. And what a hard fought game and you know turnovers that's that's the key to every game it comes down to turnovers and turnovers you know cost the Kincaid here in the second half they had a good drive going then you have to turn over from their start running back uh, Miles Roder then a quarterback just do a uh, interception here, so back-to-back -back turnovers for this offense, and just been up, you know, a tough uh, second half for them. And it looks like they're going to go for two here, trying to make this a 35-13 game. Interesting. Gordon takes the snap. He's going to hand it. Actually, they're going to fake it. A little option to Gordon. Gordon's going to take it in, and I like that a lot too. They set it up, it looked like Thomas was gonna take it to the left side. Instead, they hand it off running back right. It's an option play. Gordon winds up becoming the running back in the option. He'll get it, and he's in for two. So the two-point conversion is gonna make it 35-13. And the Episcopal Knights are putting the icing on the cake here with five minutes and 31 seconds remaining in this football game. SBC championship, and it's looking like it might go to the Pistol so Knights. Definitely. Uh, Pistol uh, Knights looking like they're getting ready to close this one, but shout out to Dan Casey and their offensive staff. You know, I haven't even seen a Chiefs or anybody in the NFL run that type of play. That's my first time seeing a play like that, period, and wouldn't be shocked if, you know, Andy Reid try to dig, you know, Andy Reid watches all type of football. So I won't be shocked if you see that one in a couple of weeks in a big time Chiefs game. Man, that was a fun one. Just a lot of bodies inside and they just kind of got lost in the shuffle. Everybody reading the mo movement going left with Thomas and they've handed it off so many times to him this second half and really throughout this game that it's, you can't almost can't blame them for assuming that he's gonna get the carry in that situation. It was like an opposite triple option. You, you know, you faked it to Thomas and then you gave it to the back, but the back was also playing out the option key there. That was. Very unique play design here by Dan Case in his offense. Yeah, going to be a short kick. This handled by Raider. Now he's going to pick it up 25, uh -oh. 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. And he's into the 40, still on his feet. He's got a blocker. 20. And Raider inside the 15. Miles Raider. There's a penalty marker down back at the 32 yard line of the Knights. As Miles Raider, he has that athleticism and the ability to put, break a big play at any given moment. He's had a couple of big returns tonight. We'll see what this penalty marker is. And they're going to say no flag on the play. And so how about this? All of a sudden, Kincaid's going to have a really, really short field. And maybe if you score quick, you're going to have to have some onside kicks to help you out with 518 remaining in this game. But Kincaid bringing a little bit of life back to their sideline. And it's not over to that clock strike 0 0 0. So I'm loving the fight and the heart I'm seeing here from this Kincaid offense as he, this game starts to wind down. And what a big time answer there from Roder providing that spark back to the sideline. And so that line of scrimmage is going to be the 13 yard line. And Capo Bianco, you need him to throw. If you're going to get back in this game, he's got to throw the ball. Yeah. And so you need to get him something here that he can 
Been a little confidence on after a couple of picks. Kappa Bianco wants to pass. It's a screen pass to Manuel. Manuel inside. He's going to catch it, take it down to the six. Manuel with the reception. And a little bit of a slip screen there to Manuel coming up from his receiver spot. And that's maybe a nice save play there. The Get Kappa Bianco yeah. a, a complete a pass. Got to get his confidence back after that huge pick, pick six in that situation. Game of seven. Raider back in the backfield, directly behind Kappa Bianco. They're going to throw it out to the flat, caught by Gomez, and nobody near him. It's like they just lost him. Running across the formation, Nico Gomez will get into the end zone. And with 441, Kincaid strikes back. Got it. Sometimes you just got to dial up your playmaker's number. You know, so you don't call plays. You call plays for your playmakers. And just try to get these guys the ball in open space, and that's what KK did there. So Nico Gomez is going to get them back on the board here. Peterson's extra point attempt is no good. He goes wide left with that. That's a big miss right there. It's going to make this 35-19. And so now you're definitely going to need some help in the special teams game. You expect an onside kick coming here with 441 remaining in the football game. So with 441. And an onside kick is uh, one of the tougher plays to execute in all of football, even at the pro level. It's just a very tough play, but it's possible here being King K. So you just got to continue to believe. They're going to also have to convert two two point conversions being down 16. So, yeah, maybe that's why they kick there. You think that takes a little bit of pressure off where you don't have to do that. You only have to get one. But instead, it's going to force them to get two. And so the, certainly the, the deck is stacked against Kincaid at this point in the football game. But miracles can happen. They do happen. They have happened. And so Kincaid holding out for a miracle here with four minutes and 41 seconds remaining in the football game. And the tougher part, Gentry, is not only do you have to get one onside kick, you're going to have to get two. Yeah, that's... that's so, yeah. so the odds are tough to get one, and now you're going to have to do it twice, but Kincaid will just take one at this point. Uh, even though the odds are slim, but just imagine if you, if you do do it, if you, if you pull it off, just imagine how great that would feel here if you're the Kincaid ball club. So you just got to have that belief that it is possible. There's still time remaining, and just play every play as hard as you can. You never know. Continue to build momentum. That's about all you can do. And it's going to go right to the front line, number 18. That's Garen Sampson on the hands team Garen that wraps Sampson it up. And, and Episcopal now, it's uh, essentially just have to bleed this clock out and put the final nails in the coffin. As uh, unfortunately for KK tonight, things just not uh, lining up the way they need them. It looks so promising. They're At the start of the second eight. half, that opening drive, they cut it down to a one-score game. And then all of a sudden, the wheels kind of coming off the bus. A couple of turnovers in the second half. A Miles Raider fumble, a Kappa Bianco interception that was returned for a touchdown. And now the script flips on them pretty quickly. And they're staring down the barrel of a 35-19 score. Lord in the shotgun. Quick toss out to Thomas. Thomas running left, and Thomas is going to be wrapped up. And a timeout going to be taken immediately by Thomas, head coach area. Nathan Laird. And uh, they only have one remaining, so they're going to be able to clock, two, stop two, the clock eight, one more time. Down, right now, stop nine, with four minutes and 34 seconds remaining. Yeah, head coach right now just going to tell his guys, hey, swipe at the football, pull at it, do whatever you can, try to get us the football back. Uh, at the same time, be sound and fundamental w when you wrap up. You don't want to cause too many break, you know, missed tackles and allow them to pick up a first down. And a quick shout out to these coaching staffs. You see these players working hard, but both of these coaching staffs doing a great job of preparing these squads. For Episcopal head coach Steve Lice, their wide receivers coach Searcy Thomas, their defensive coordinator is James Moynihan, their offensive coordinator Dan Casey, the running back and special teams coach Merrill Middleton. Offensive line coach Vince Arduini and their offensive assistant Rashad Bates. Their defensive line coach Tom Bove. Their linebackers coach, Al coach Alan Bradshaw, a class of 99 from Episcopal. Defensive back coach Jonathan Holland. Special teams coach John Drexel, class of 2010. 
And then their freshman head coach and JV head coaches, David Framo and Alan Bradshaw, is class of 99. Kind of round out the coaching staff and give these coaches a little bit of love. We'll bring in Ken Cade's coaching staff here in just a few moments. After the timeout, Gordon in the shotgun is going to bring Thomas to his left. They're going to hand it off to him, running right at midfield. He's going to be stuffed, hit initially by Reed Louisi. And that's the final timeout taken by Thomas Kincaid. And it will come with four minutes and 29 seconds left. After the timeout, Episcopal's going to have a third about seven. And Kincaid's timeout. coached by head coach timeout. Nathan Lard. He's assisted by John Friday. On the defensive side of the football, Everett Coleman, Nathan Lard, Brandon Lehu, Hamilton Randall. Nathan Lard is the defensive coordinator. On the offensive side, the offensive coordinator is Lucas Peters. Owen Daniels, the tight ends coach, John Friday and Steve Moss round out the offensive staff for Kincaid. So big shout out to both of these coaching staffs and the job that they've done in, in getting their teams to this SBC championship game and, and really a testament to what they've done over this last decade plus as we talked about that gentry at the top of the broadcast how really the SBC championship has gone through these two teams over the course going all the way back to 2008 there's only one SBC championship that has not been won by one of these two teams and that was in 2016. Yeah shout out to both like you said Aaron but shout out to both these coaches staff. this has been a well coached game by both coaching staffs and uh the Piscos looks like they're going to come away with the, come away with the win but these coaching staffs are definitely some of the best in the Houston area. And the ball is loose and King Kane will pick it up Oh, and they're going to take it all the way in. Parker Kubitza returns it for a touchdown as Gordon coughs it up. And maybe it's not over, Gentry, until the fat lady sings. And <laughs> she has not done so yet tonight. As a fumble return for a touchdown. And Kim Kade, if nothing else, is going to make it interesting here at the end. I tell you what, this Kim K ball club. They are fighting to the very end, and they're keeping the hope alive. And you see the stands, everybody here on the purpose, uh, on Ken K's side, now on their feet, excited for these young men. And now it comes down to this two-point conversion, and that can be happier for those young men down on the football field. And wow, what a, what a turn of events right there. It's, I mean, you couldn't ask for anything better. You were out of timeouts. And so really, Gordon just goes down right there. The clock will just continue to run. Instead, it's 417 right now. And if they get this two-point conversion, it is a one-score plus a two-point conversion game. Man, they're missing a guy on the football field, and, and they're out of timeouts. he got to get on that field. Well, and actually, Episcopal is going to help him out. Wow. Episcopal takes the timeout for them. And I don't think Episcopal recognized that they were they were down a player, and if they had, maybe they would have they would have thought better about taking that timeout. But I think they were trying to look and see what formation Kincaid came out in, try to figure out how to set up their defense. But uh, you're right, they were down. Kincaid was down a player. That was almost a disaster because, like you said, they don't have a timeout. And, and right now they they you know they dodged that one, but. Uh, for Kincaid, it's just going to come down to execution on this play. Uh, the coaching staff have done a great job of dialing up some great play calls in all these situations on the Kincaid side. And as far as the Episcopal, this defense, you know, now you got to, you know, lock in again. This game is far from over. Lock in and try to stop this two-point conversion. Yeah, this is a pivotal play. I mean, the game essentially on the line here. Copa Bianco in the gun. Miles Rader directly behind him. It's a tight formation. They send Gomez in motion left to right. Copa Bianco wants to pass. Firing. And he maybe could have gotten away right there with a with a pass interference call. It looked like he leaned into him early, but once again, the route was run shy of the goal line. Yeah, it, it was it looked like he, he intended to be in the red zone, but uh, not too much separation for the wide receivers in the end zone that time. Nowhere really for uh, the quarterback to go, throw with the football. So now it's going to come back down to this onside kick and just keeping hope alive right now for Kincaid. 35-25 is your score. 
There's four minutes and 17 seconds remaining in this football game. It's the TAPS 2023, S what did I say TAPS, SBC, whoops, sorry SBC. <laughs> <laughs> I did TAPS earlier today, so I guess that's it's on the brain. So it's, it's a, a long day. <laughs> it's a long day, 2023 <laughs> SBC championship game. It's the Bayou City Battle as it's been named. And uh, it's, it's featured these two teams since going back to 2008, everyone of um, those games have featured one of these two teams and a lot of times it's been both of them battling it out together. Episcopal trying to get back into the win column after Kincaid won it all a year ago. They knocked off Episcopal 17 to six in a championship game and, and really an interesting game as Kincaid lost their two starting quarterbacks or their number one and number two quarterbacks throughout the course of the season. They converted to a wing T offense and wind up winning an SBC championship with it. Peterson's got it teed up. Onside kick is coming. Oh. And it's loose and it's caught. Kid Kane's got it. I tell you what. <laughs> oh man. It went right off the chest of Garen Sampson. Last time he snagged it in a hurry, fell on top of it. This time it goes off his chest and Kincaid recovers. That was Boyd Holcomb coming up with the onside kick. And Kincaid, there's still life in TD ECU Stadium for the purple and black. Wow. And by now that time they executed the onside kick, Aaron. And I am speechless right now. <laughs> It's just how quickly this game has turned and it, it's gonna wow this has been a, a tremendous end of this game and i'm excited to watch the rest of it yeah it seemed like it episcopal was gonna run away with it there all of a sudden and ken cade you talked about it all night no no way they're gonna go down without fighting and they have certainly done that here to the bitter end. Four minutes and 17 seconds left. Copa Bianco is going to throw the screen to Manuel. Manuel's got some room. 40, 35, and down inside the 35 to the 33. And quickly they try to get back to the line of scrimmage. Look at Gomez. <laughs> Gomez is <laughs> barking out orders saying, get lined up. We don't have time. No timeouts remaining for Kincaid. Copa Bianco wants to pass. Looking deep. Throwing across the middle, and it's going to be knocked away. And no flag on the play as good coverage there, they say, for number four. That was coming over the top, Sean Thompson. And yep. that pass from Copa Bianco just hung in the air a little too long. Yeah, a little bit too long. It allowed Thompson to get out, out underneath, on, underneath the pass. Have you seen his ability to track the ball here, playing center field? And you're right, Aaron. I got to see if that kid has some baseball background because his ability to play center field is next level. Copa Bianco will take the snap, second and 10. Wanting to pass, steps up in the pocket. He's gonna force it to Gomez. And maybe almost better off not completing that pass because all they get on the play is about two and a half yards and the clock will keep running. It's at 340. It'll be third and seven. A dime look here for Episcopal. They give it to Raider. Raider continuing to spin. Raider has got the first down, so. Clock will stop while they move the chains. They've got to get set up quickly, though. Smart play call there. Only three down defensive linemen and uh, one defensive tackle in the game right now in this dime coverage. Episcopal just trying to keep everything in front of them here and make Kincaid have to chew up clock on the scoring drive. They give it back to Raider again. Raiders going to get close to four on first down. Copa Bianco, they're going to give it to him again. It's just a heavy dose of Miles Raider. Raiders going to carry down to the 10. It's another first down. And so while they're taking what the defense gives them, the clock continuing to run here. And it's now under three minutes and counting, 2.55. And now a timeout's going to be taken by Episcopal. Episcopal is going to help Kincaid out again by stopping yeah. this clock. Wow, interesting uh, timeout there, but man, look, the, the heart of this Kincaid ball club and, and the rest, this entire team, defensive staff, offense staff, I, you know, I couldn't be more prouder of these young men out here fighting to the very end. Yeah, and it's not an accident that Kincaid has won six of the last 10 SBC championships. I mean, they certainly once you have a, a championship pedigree and you know how to win in big games, I think 
it gives you that sense of what you talked about, Gentry, of just never never counting yourself out of a contest. And Kincaid is, is certainly, they're battling right now. I mean, this is Episcopal's game to lose at this point. I still think they're in control. But all the momentum has firmly shifted to the Kincaid side of the field. They give the Episcopal student section credit. They've got the gong working. They're, they're, <laughs> trying, to, they're trying to energize their players to hang on here. 35-25, Kincaid working in. Ball's going to be on the left hash. First and goal. Line of scrimmage at 10-yard line. Copa Bianco takes the snap. Pass it to the middle. Ooh. Ball's deflected, and that was nearly intercepted, and Ty Blevins was right there, and he knows he could have ended the game right there if he could have snagged that. Yeah, Ty Blevins that time just sitting inside, and sitting in the mid zone here for the Episcopal Knights, oh, able to nice. get his hands on and knock it down, and now allowing that pass to get over his head. So a good part of that play for Kincaid is that the clock stops. Two minutes and 48 seconds, so it'll be second and goal. Copa Bianco in the gun. He's going to now move Miles Raider from behind him to his left. Copa Bianco has got the snap. Pressure coming. And he's going to complete the pass down to the five. That was complete to Peterson. But the clock will keep moving. They pick up five yards on the play. They still got a score, though. Third and goal. Taking a lot of time all of a sudden on this drive. Copa Bianco wants to pass. Yeah, Pressure an coming. And he's going to be sacked. And that's the one thing that you can't have happen if you're Copa Bianco and this Kincaid Falcons offense. And Copa Bianco is he's not a very mobile quarterback, is he, Jason? Nah, he's more so of an you know, throwback pocket uh, passer. And he had a, a, a route breaking open there on a zig route on the outside. Was it um, Christian Murray was breaking open there just couldn't get the ball off so here's the game a minute 56 fourth down and goal for the Falcons that's it and he under throws it and it's picked off Copa Bianco he had what he wanted he had the play he under throws the pass and it's picked off by Brooks Edwards and Copa Bianco's third interception on the night will prove to be the Falcons undoing. It comes with one minute and 46 seconds remaining in the football game. And that will put the game away. And I know this is gonna be you know hard for these young men to understand, but like they shouldn't they should not hang their head low, man. These guys fought like true champions to the very end and without giving up. And for these seniors who possibly uh, you know is gonna be their final game here for Kincaid and gonna go on to be prosperous young men out in the community. What a way to show, you know, put up a good fight here in this championship game. Victory formation for Episcopal. Kincaid cannot stop the clock now. They've used all their timeouts. And so it's going to be an Episcopal Knights victory here in the 2023 SPC Championship. And it's uh, it's been a very entertaining game for sure Gentry. I mean both of these teams battling scrapping clawing been a hard-hitting game and so uh, people got their money's worth coming into the facility tonight it's a beautiful venue and it's been a, a well-played game on both sides yeah definitely a well-played game is uh, both of these teams uh, epitomize uh, the true testament of what it is to be a championship team and they, they made their uh, schools and athletic departments very proud the way they represented themselves here tonight you know no you didn't see too many pushing and shoving after plays. Very clean football. Uh, guys showing great sportsmanship. And I, I like uh, the athletic departments here for bro both programs, uh, the way they represent themselves. And in his 19th season at the helm, he started at Episcopal in 2005. Steve Lice will win another SBC championship. It's 124th career win. And with that, he's going to add his fifth SBC championship to the record. And a congratulations to the Episcopal Knights, the 2023 SBC championship team, as they storm the field. I would imagine that you might see that student section unleash here before too long. And, uh, and hats off to Kincaid, as you said. A well-played championship game.
They will fall up just short. Your final tonight as the, the clock officially winds out. 35 to 25 is your final. The Piscopo Knights 35, the Kincaid Falcons 25. Yeah, what a game here, and uh, shout out to Carson Gorn, uh, Five Live player of the game. He put on a heck of a performance, and, and you see why he has multiple Power Five offers, and can't wait to see where this kid's going to be continuing his uh, football career. Yeah, and so uh, you win an a SBC championship on Saturday, and then the following week you get to announce your commitment to a Power Five school, and as you said, we can't wait to see where that's going to be. But, uh, you know, it, life is good if you're Carson Gordon right now. <laughs> And the Episcopal Knights as the two teams make their way to midfield to to shake hands and a lot of respect between these two programs. I mean, it's it's not uh, coaching at Lutheran South Academy. We play both of these teams in baseball every single year, and so you know having a chance to know these coaching staffs and these players, uh, nothing but class on both sides of the field. And, and there's a lot of respect for these two teams because it's it's even in, in other sports and a lot of times it's Episcopal and Kincaid battling it out for championships, typically in baseball almost every year as well. Yep. So th these two opponents are very, very familiar with one another and uh, a lot of mutual respect as they shake hands. And Episcopal going to gonna get that trophy and carry it over to the student section here before too long. The trophy's out there. Uh, out there on the field where they head over to celebrate with their student section and their fans and uh, sea of white over there in the Episcopal <laughs> student section and, and what a fun game tonight Gentry. Oh man this this was an exciting game from the jump man we've seen Carson going with the 75 yard electrifying touchdown run and it's been back and forth these teams you know it's been a tug of war and this is the epitome of a championship game and at a great venue shout out to both of these uh, fans and families coming out to support their, their, their loved ones here on the field tonight. And I, I'm, I'm glad I was a part of this game and I'm um, also honored to be able to uh, call this game with you, Aaron. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been a lot of fun, Drencher, for sure. And a, and a you know first-class stadium as well to play this game in at TDECU Stadium here on the campus of the University of Houston, John O'Quinn Field. Uh, they certainly have uh, spared no expense to make this a, a beautiful facility. And tonight, TDECU Stadium belongs to the Episcopal Knights. They are your 2023 SPC champion. So congratulations to them. Gentry, it's been a lot of fun. And uh, it's been a pleasure bringing you tonight's game. I'm Eric Schneider along with Gentry Williams saying good night tonight from the University of Houston where it's the Episcopal Knights 35, the Kincaid Falcons 25, Episcopal is your 2023 SBC football champions. You watch it all tonight on Vipe Live.